Welcome, one and all, to another live stream edition of the Hard Rock Show. I'm Andrew, and uh, on joining us tonight, as always, we have Dave beside me, Jeff to the other side of the screen, and then underneath we have Bell and Conrad. Uh, thank you guys for jumping in to another Thursday night. Here we go, off in Conrad's case, morning, <laughs> getting up toward midday there. Um, but here we are with another one. We've got a lot to get through, as always. So we're going to, going to continue on with round six of our 1990 versus 1992 uh, King of the Rift series, which this week uh, sees Alison Chain's facelift go up against Black Sabbath, the Humanizer. Uh, we're going to do round three of our Builder playlist, the Ingve Malmsteen, the Polydor Years edition by picking songs from Trilogy and going over the results of last week as well. We're going to do Who Am I, the album edition, and it's Dave's turn this week after Bell started this uh, theme last week. And then we've got all the usual stuff as well, you know, the bin and all the other stuff coming up later on. If you're here, say hi in the comments, join in the fun, all the usual stuff. Um yeah, and check that on telly as well. You can see us on Channel 31 Saturday nights at 10.30 p.m. in Melbourne and 10.30 p.m. Thursday nights on Channel 44 in Adelaide. So that's, you know, about an hour from now, roughly, um, in Channel 44 land, if you want to do that while well, Jeff's camera shits itself again. This oh. is why we've had numerous tech issues behind the scenes. We're just going to keep running things as we go. Yeah, uh, Guru is here know. saying, greeting rockets from across the plane. Edge, Edge Crush is saying, hello, everyone. Oh. Just for the record here, folks, people have... um. There are reference tracks. Uh, we'll put them in the comments and as we go along. But in case you're watching later on or you miss them, they're in the description box as well. So reference tracks, links, all the usual stuff is there. So go check those out as we go through things here. Um, while we get Jeff back here, I'll do the rounds in a minute. But there's a few things I want to touch on first. One is we'd be remiss. We put a post up about this the other day. It happened, I think, about a week ago now was when the official word came out. But I want to touch on the passing of uh, Dennis Sell, who was uh, an awesome supporter of the local scene one of the you'd be hard pressed to sort of top him in terms of how many gigs he'd go to and, and how much support he would give he was one of the and then on top of that he was just an all-around lovely bloke as well i know that i'm pretty sure dave you probably interacted with him more than i did over the years yeah. but at the same time he was always so much fun and had a lot of love to give and was just an awesome person that supported the scene so i want to again even though I did the post earlier this week, I want to send our condolences to everyone that knew and loved him because he will be missed by not just obviously those that knew him best, but also the scene have has lost one of the really yeah. good ones, a legend gone far too soon. Dave, did you have any thoughts that you wanted to share as well? Yeah, like absolute champion bloke. Um, when you go to a lot of gigs, like I did a lot of time mm. back when I was eight years ago, so whatever. Start to recognize people turning up at every gig that I went to, and I went to a lot, but not as many as he did. He wasn't even local, he lived up in Mordura. He would come yeah. down for business and go to gigs on the weekend. And I saw him everywhere from Marabin to the SB to everywhere yeah. in between. And he was on the page for the Hard Rock Show, and I recognized the name, I recognized him. So I just like, hey, man, how's it doing? Just ended up just chatting whenever we went to a gig, yeah. Sonia as well, and Wayne and Nikki. Yep. I think Nikki knew him a lot better than I did too. She's pretty upset too. Yeah. yeah, he was just a really, really friendly guy. Loved his music. Always recommended bands to go check out. Would always interact with bands afterwards and go say awesome set, all that simple yeah. shit that people do. It makes people feel good. Though. It was really, really sad to hear that he he's no longer with us. I hadn't seen well since COVID lockdown and all that shit. Yeah, yeah, it just kind of sucks that if I ever go to a gig, I'm not going to see him. It's, yeah, that's kind of yeah. When, uh, it sucks. I'm I'm gonna miss him sad yeah, yeah. It, it is sad i don't know if anyone else has anything they want to jump in with there um I'll leave a, a space there for a second but um i'm not sure if i knew him i don't know yeah i i don't know unless yeah but like just even if you go through his profile and that the, the amount of yeah. profile and that that was there it was just it was like dave said he used to commute and, and do it and and just yeah i know there's people that knew him I'll better probably than recognize him by face i don't doubt yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. the amount of gigs you go to man yeah he would have crossed path yeah, yeah definitely um, yeah, it was always front and center was he a musician himself at all no I, no he's no. just a fan no, no, not, just, just a fan he had uh, a lot of saw a lot of photos because i had to go and i wanted to see because if i knew him and I, mm. I, if he came to the to tapings and stuff i don't know if he did but I don't think um, he did. No, not the time. No, it no, was just gigs that we saw him at. Okay. Yeah. I saw he had a lot of Lazarus Mode shirts on. and I, I, mm. oh, I love that band. Yeah. Wow. Remember, I remember like up at Eddie's band room, Lazarus Mode, Palace of the King. That's where I first met him, actually. Oh, wow. And and Jake, 
Jake James from Lazarus Mode took me out to his car, just like you got to hear the fucking demos for the album that we just recorded. I actually heard him. Like, I remember he was so when Jake proud. would do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah, that night I was like, I met, De- I met Dennis for the first time. Just like, man, fucking Hell's the King are playing again next week. The SB, I'm like, okay, I'll see you there, dude. Just shit like that. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, again, from all of us um, at the show, I think I can speak yeah. on behalf of us all here. And, and like Nicky behind the scenes and others that haven't been on camera recently, but all of us that knew him, well, yeah, he will be missed. And um, yeah, our condolences to everyone that knew him. Loved him. It's unfortunate, but I wanted to make sure we sort of put another um acknowledgement of that in there as well and and enjoy things while you can folks because life is far far too short um yeah just quickly here rowan's here as well michael saying good evening all so it's, a, it's always a rough segue after those things but we've got to move on next one is a gig plug so i'm just going to quickly do this one here there's may 3rd may 4th the two nights in a row you've got a music i was like an x music showcase which is at the workers club in fitzroy on the third and scotty's garage in seaford on the fourth uh this uh Lineup is Sisters Doll, Excalibur, Cicada Stone, and Audio Rain, um, which is four fucking great bands, very different bands to each other as well. So it's a very interesting, very cool lineup. Uh, but also, just on the record here, we've interviewed already Audio Rain and Cicada Stone. So make sure you keep an eye out for those interviews coming up very, very soon on TV and online as well. They'll be released very, very shortly. So keep your eyes out for that one there. But May 3rd, May 4th, two great gigs. Um, so go and check them out if you can. Uh, Vinny's here saying, evening all, good to see everyone after such a heavy week yeah. across the nation. It has been. So, again, on that note, I didn't really want to go too much into it, but yeah, our, our sympathies to those in Sydney in particular. Um, that was an absolute... Yeah, what the shit. fuck? What the fuck is going on over there? It's fucking no, mental. Yeah. I don't know, it's man. It's, it's a shit going on. Fuck. Yeah, so. Everyone that's impacted our sympathies and condolences, it's it's been a bit of a shit show. We'll try and lighten the mood up and have some fun. We, we don't want to go too dark tonight, but we'll try and... Oh, and um, no, that's all right. Uh, to just try and move on as best yeah. we can here. But no, but we do have our... I think all of us watched that play out and we're just all like, wow, what the fuck is, is going on here? So I, I yeah. don't think any of us were didn't feel anything about that at all, but it's just unfortunate that this is where we are at the moment. So we just try and bring what we can to entertain people and have some fun, uh, change things up along the way. But no, again, anyone impacted, that's that's devastating shit. So yeah, um, sympathies to all involved. Uh, Terry's here as well saying, hi all, good to see you as well. Good to see the regulars in here. Make sure if you're a first timer, jump in as well. But if you're a regular, make yeah. sure you say hi too. Same with Jolly. Hi everyone, hope all well. We Thank are you. all doing well aside from our hey. technical issues, which is the only thing bothering us. But if that's the extent of our problems, we're doing pretty fucking well. So I think we can't complain. All right, let's do the, the highlights of the week. Dave, what's your highlight of the week? this week oh there's not much happening this week just um yeah. busy doing life stuff um being a being in a taxi driving jade to and from various yeah. social events she's back at school <laughs> this week so obviously she's been busy every week yeah i don't mind i love it she's got um, new friends and awesome. um sleepovers being organized and meeting new parents and dropping her off at, or picking her up from some swimming place that her friends took her to with her mum and got mcdonald's on the way i don't know she's happy and i'm happy that she's happy apart from that the only real highlight i went to the library <laughs> and i like going to the library so got yeah. a couple of books one from my favorite author and i found an aerosmith 50th anniversary book which was cool and a book on horror movies chronological throughout the years right from the um invention of cinema so it's cool wow. history of from the early early silent short five minute reels all the way up to the fucking 2010s which is cool wow. Nice. I've actually borrowed it before for a different cover, so I got I got rolled. <laughs> Who's your favorite author? My favorite author, Dean Coons. Oh, followed right. by Stephen King. Yep. I like horror. Nice. I got a lot of Stephen King's books where I had a game book. Yeah. 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 Still got some. I got I got most until about fifteen years ago. Hmm. Can't keep yeah. up. <laughs> How you get? Oh yeah. Um peachy um no this week has been, been <laughs> wow you sounded it then that was convincing yeah very convincing. <laughs> and the oscar goes to no, yeah. not um, <laughs> no um so this which I've, I've been like you know obviously with my car issues and stuff i'm like i'm just mm-hmm. like i'm over it so um I, i've been looking at um you know probably buying a new car soon i think okay yeah and uh so it's obviously it's a big uh you know, mm. anytime you buy a car, it, it, big deal. I've never owned one. 
Never owned mm. a car. Oh, I've had many, but um, mm -hmm. I don't even yeah. have my license. <laughs> Hence the reason why you don't have a car. A car, yeah. yeah, yeah. You don't need one in London. Well, this is true. No. You don't because it's the yeah, public transport. So that's the thing. So when I did yeah. the public transport yeah. last week, there when I went out to the mm. new office. Uh, where it took like three hours each way. Fuck I'm that. like, no what? fucking way am I going to be doing that. And so coming up very soon mm. with my work, I'm going to be, um, so we've been working uh, in the office uh, three days a month, but, you know, since mm -hmm. COVID, they, they, you know, that was the thing. Yeah. So, and then work from home, but now it's going to be three days a week coming up in about a month's mm. time. Out. So I can't expect public, you to drive there. They can't expect you to do that, surely. Oh yeah, no, I don't mind the drive. It, driving mm. is fine because that's only a little over an hour. But when you do public transport, you, you yeah, tack on an hour and a half yeah. on top of that. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. no, nope, I'm not doing that. That's that's the fucking true. Only yeah. if I had no choice for a small amount of time, not mm. like three days a week. No, 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 too no. far. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's too much. Yeah. yeah. So to give you an idea, uh, Cranbourne. And mm -hmm. the office is in Preston. Oh wow! So okay, yeah, it's a fair bit. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ouch. Yeah. So anyway, not doing that. Uh, but I will be gone. Just be driving yeah. under my own thing. So. Yep. Anyway, that's that's it. So that's my big fucking highlight: buying a new car. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, uh, I guess we go down. To yep. Bill. Hello. Um, Hello. Um, I have to apologize because I'm well on my way to getting a little bit drunk because I'm drinking <laughs> some blue shit. <laughs> Toilet bowl cleaner. Right? Oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh. I'm going to try to stay composed. I think Let Belle can pull up a chair this week instead of me. Yeah. I hope not. Yeah. I hope not. It has wheels. <laughs> that was mine. That's why I fell off it. No, this I remember. It was fucking interesting hilarious. tonight. Yeah. <laughs> so I will just um, try to. I don't know. Maybe I should slow down. Uh, okay. So my week. It's really busy work wise. Ella started school holidays this mm. week. Um, I had two orthodontist appointments. Oh, yay. Um, which is never fun. The first one. Mm. They like they rip out a wire and they put a new one in to tighten everything up. And it makes your teeth like if anyone who's had yeah. bags, it makes oh, your teeth aches. ache. Yeah. Ache and like especially when you eat. It's a real bitch. Um yeah. and then on Wednesday, or was it I don't know. Yeah, yesterday, I had to get um some x-rays done and some scans because apparently the next stage is they make up wires, like some company make up wires that so the orthodontist doesn't fit them. Oh, okay. You know, during the appointment. Mm. Um, so that the x rays was fine, but the scans, they have this um, like camera thing and they sort of run it over your teeth, like in top and bottom, inside and out. And it's, it's like, it's awkward as shit. Like it's this big mm. thing. It's about like the size. It's like the size and shape of a dildo, and like the this thing that what? Like, you got to open your mouth. Got to like, it. Here we go. I'm oh, sorry. Oh. That's kind of how it. it I is, didn't think right? it was this kind of show. <laughs> the hard cock show. Here we go. I did oh, warn you. I I warned you. Look. Anyway, yeah. it was really Did fucking it turn awkward. To this okay. thing takes about 10 minutes and I'm there with my mouth open with this thing. Like, anyway, wow. it's really quite <laughs> violating. <laughs> so, <I know>. cute. <laughs> <laughs> so is that the highlight of your week, Bill? Wow. Yeah. Yeah, wow. Violating it a little bit, um, you know, a turn on. No, it was not a turn on. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> I can probably shut up. Shut up. Please, oh, wow. Uh, well, I don't know how I can top that. <laughs> I think we're all on a downhill slide from here. Um, that yeah, no, no, nothing as exciting as that quite. I, I saw Blind Guardian, who were absolutely nice. fucking stunning. 
Brilliant. Cool. Uh, balls. Yes, that was on Sunday. They were killer. And I started a rock night in a, in a bar in uh, Soho. I cool. kicked off a new rock night and it, it went really well. And we've secured a residency and I've got a monthly night now in a bar in Soho. So that, nice. that's worked out rather right. nicely. Cool. Yeah. Cool. At 150 quid cash as well. Well, that's <laughs> all right. Take that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so I'll take that and I get pissed, I get shit faced. So <laughs> it fucking works out rather well. I get paid to get shit faced drunk and play the music I like. There you <laughs> go. Wow. Nice Thank, you. Thank yep. you just topped my week. Yeah, yeah. Well that's done. awesome. Oh yeah. Oh, I don't know about that, Belle. Yours sounded a bit more exciting. <laughs> <laughs> We are in uh, anyways, so yes, that was my my week. Uh, very uh, yeah, yeah, it worked out well, and I'm yeah. DJing tomorrow night as well. So awesome, another yeah. another rock night in yeah. London. So yeah, it's doing 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 all right. Yeah, awesome. That's fantastic. Yeah. Um, not heaps to report from mine. I think the the highlight of the week has just been the fact that we got the interviews rolling again. So, um, I put a post out last week or earlier this week. I don't know when I did it anymore, but just. Saying so, you know the best email to get to is you know media at the hard and that got a few hits coming in already and, and we've got a, a bit of a backlog already with people that want interviews and are available for stuff so it's all sort of ticking over nicer now which is cool i said it's a good problem to have um but just getting back into the swing of things it's probably been a couple of years i reckon since i've done an interview and just, you know it was like riding a bike nothing went wrong everything was you know very smooth and easy so yeah very happy with how it all went and started the editing process already and that's you know just getting that that feeling that that um that groove back was a cool little highlight moment. A lot of work this week, a lot of hours, but a lot of late nights getting things done for TV in particular. But no, it's been it's been good to get that that ball rolling and looking forward to establishing a rhythm and 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 that with it now. So no, very very happy with how that's turned out and pumped to do a lot more interviews this year. Especially the highlight of the week is just starting that process up, which is fantastic as far as I am concerned. And hopefully a lot of people out, people out there will enjoy what comes out of that um speaking of other people let's go sally says hello metal peeps good to see you as always so with david's here g'day all all the best hey. likewise to you michael's on love both authors auto peter straub good horror as well yeah he's yeah interesting they stuff. co-wrote a book together too mm. uh, the, two. Uh, two of them yeah right uh, yeah. Dragon, no. something ah uh, i'll never get the title too old. Too <laughs> In the background, uh, Vinny says, You're not missing much, Conrad. I'm about to drop over four grand on a new timing change for my Commodore. Not enough Vaseline for me to sit on that result comfortably. Wow, oh, Fucking hell, man. That's a, four that's grand, a, yeah, that's that's a lot, man. Yeah. Um, yeah. Vinny says, Drink responsibly, Bell. Only two for every viewer watching this stream. So <laughs> <laughs> here we go this is going to be fun now because michael's gone is blue bathtub gin well there we go that's what bell looks oh, like maybe. Vinny says my toes just curled bell and what happened next um <laughs> sally's gone ha huh? bell blow to emoji i have tequila so there we go Vinny <laughs> says wasn't there a cycle episode where the dentist puts jerry to sleep and he wakes up yes. to his, dentist, his assistant getting dressed that was <laughs> <so good. laughs> oh wow um man family oh, here no. saying good day all good to see you Hi. as always too thanks for jumping in and then michael says floating yeah, dragon the talisman oh, as well the okay talisman. cool so back on the talisman that's the one fuck yeah i don't remember that oh, all right we fun. started late let's keep moving along let's get on to our songs of the week this week and first up jeff you are first cab off the rank you were assigned uh, Red Sun by Black Country Communion. There's a link in the comments and the description oh, box for this one. Red Sun? Yeah. Oh, I did a different one. I hope not. Ah! That, that's it. That's it. Anyway. That was too easy. Wrong. You know, the one day you're going to do it and you will fuck it up and be like, well, this will be good. Um, yeah. And anyway, yeah, this is yeah. from the upcoming uh, BCCV, you know, Black Country Communion 5, due 14th of Janu uh, June 2024, not January. I'll get it right this week. Uh, this, obviously, for those who don't know, is a super group featuring Glenn Hughes, Joe Bonamassa, Jason Bonham, and Derek Sharunian. This will be the band's fifth album, Michael Kirby 4, and follows the track Stay Free as a second single. This was nominated, just to get the record here, this was nominated from Patreon via Michael. Uh, ah. So thank you for, for the nomination thank there. You. It got voted up. And uh, Jeff, 
the floor is yours. Yeah, well, I'd like to thank Michael for nominating the song. It was a great mm -hmm. job, so thank you. Um, look, I've been a fan of these guys since they started. Uh, obviously, long-time fan of uh, the musicians that make up this band, obviously, Joan mm -hmm. Bonamassa. Uh, and I've even been, I've been a longer fan of Glenn Hughes, you mm -hmm. know, since way back. Um, so naturally, when I heard that they were going to be in a band together, alongside Jason Bonham and Derek Sherinian, I was going to be interested because this was a super group of epic proportions in my books. Yep. Um, so then when I heard the band was actually back together and they were going to actually record another album, apparently they started this uh, post or, or pre COVID yeah. uh, and they were going to do all sorts of things. They were, you know, planning writing sessions and everything, but then COVID hit and that fucked all the plans. So this has been, this is going back probably five years. Um, and ironically, yep. their new album is called five. So mm -hmm. um, I was obviously super excited when I found that out. So, look, Red Sun has definitely got uh, music that comes from the heart from the band. You, when you hear it, there's a feeling and vibe that just permeates this song. And I will say it's a very, they've got, they're one of those bands that when you hear them, you instantly know yeah. who, who it is, right? And not a lot of bands can do that. And so that's kind of cool. Um, and now their last song, which was a bit of a departure, uh, Stay Free, mm. uh, still had that signature sound. There was something about it, even though it was kind of like a, um, geez, what was, how would you describe that last song? It was kind of like, um, I don't know. It, 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 was it, it, had, it, was, it wasn't rock, really. It was, it, there yeah, was, it was rock slower. there. Yeah. It was slower, but it had like, yeah, I can't even put my finger on it. I, it's on the almost back like a phone. soul blues kind of a thing. Yeah. 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 It had, there was a bit of just something else there, but it had yeah. a lot of character, which is really awesome. And, mm. and I thought that, you know, along with this new song, Red Sun, uh, and, and that obviously the first single, Stay Free, it just oozes character uh, and mm. flair. Um, now, the playing on Red Sun itself is nothing short of magnificent. Uh, you get the familiar guitar tones of Joe Bonamassa. He's a guitar master. There's no question about it. You know, you got the powerhouse vocals of Glenn Hughes. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, his stellar bass playing. Yeah. Now, he's just a small guy, from what I understand. And he's 72 years old. Where the fuck yep. does he get his stamina? I, I don't know. And he's so prolific. <laughs> yeah. So prolific. I mean, he mm. when when uh, Black Country Communion, communion uh, eventually, you know, in 2013, they, they, they called it quits. Then they got back together yeah. uh, in 2017 and, and did number four. And then now they yeah. do it again. Um, you know, he didn't stop. I mean, he was doing stuff like yeah. um, um, California Breed. He he filled, did a band yep. with uh, Jason Bond, yep. which was really good. Andrew he was Watson, in Dead Daisies for a bit as well, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, so his career, you know, obviously all the stuff with uh, Deep Purple, but he was uh, yep. Black Sabbath uh, singer as mm. well, you know, off uh, uh, Seventh Star. If anyone yep. loves that album, which I absolutely adore that album. Mm -hmm. um, and then, but you he's know, you've got, what's that? He's sung yeah. Sabbath as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's done so Ed Gillen and Hughes. Ed Gillen right. and Hughes. Yeah. 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 So the, it, that was in 86. He joined Sabbath and um, he only played six. Uh, six uh, songs uh, on the on the tour because his health was so bad and so poor. Mm. Plus, he was drinking and drugs and all kinds of things. They basically yeah. said, you, you know, you can't do this. Yeah. You're gonna die. So mm, yeah, yeah, he went into like rehab and stuff, and that was it. That's when they they hired Ray Gillen for Sabbath. Mm. That's the era. Yeah. Um. So look, you, I could go on and on about Glenn Hughes. Obviously, he's a legend, and he, you know, is amazing. I love his vocals. He's got a really powerhouse vocal. It's kind of nasally high pitched, but it's still it's you know, just it's a not, Yeah, it's not high pitched like Getty Lee, but it's mm. it's it's up there, you know. And uh, he can, he's got a real control over that that vocal, which is awesome. Mm. And then you got a guy like Jason Bonham, uh, which is like his drumming is next level, you know. Um, he's not. Bonzo, you know, if anyone knows mm. Bonzo, Bonzo was his father. Uh, yeah, well, but but he's, you know, he's got it in the blood. It, he, he, it comes out in the music. He's a chip off the old block, really. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, you got Derek Sherinian. This guy needs no introduction. His key playing on this and just about everything else he, else he does is second to none. He fits very well in the band. He's very tasteful as a keyboard mm. player, which is nice. He's not, he doesn't 
try to overpower the song, he plays back. And yet you can pick his stuff out and it, it adds a, um, a, a ambiance to it. It's, mm. it's very nice. He's a very yeah. tasteful player. Um, you know, I think this is a stellar single from, I think, a stellar band. And I cannot wait for V uh, or Five to drop mm -hmm. um, uh, in June because it's going to be on there. Uh, I'll be first in line to grab that. Yep. So, yeah, love this song. So thank you, Michael, for recommending this song for us. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Cheers. Cool. Well, let's do the rounds before I go to the comments. Thumbs up, thumbs down. In between, where are we at, folks? I'm going to go thumbs up on this one. All good. I played, All around uh, there we go. Played I think I played some of this album on my radio show last night. I played another track from this record. Yep. Stay Free yeah. would be the other track that's yeah, available. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. I cool. spoke to Glenn Hughes on the yeah. promo stuff for the first album. That was yeah. a really cool interview. Mm. Yeah. Generally speaking, I, I, you've spoken to my heaven, but apparently he seems pretty giving in that regard as well. Which is, mm. which is yeah. Cool. It's a great fucking interview. Mm. Um. Audience, Vinny's gone thumbs up all around, which is good there. Rowan says, sounds right. Always have time for Glenn Hughes, which is, I think, a yeah. common theme here. Um, um, Michael says, it's not bathtub gin, it's the rinse water from the dentist when it comes to Bella's oh, Springs. Oh, it, it kind of tastes like <laughs> it. It doesn't wow. taste very good. There we go. So he's putting it away for the sake of putting it away now, are you? Yeah. <laughs> okay, that works. I've done, I've been there, done that plenty of times. Uh, Bash says, Bash is here. Uh, hi, all. Put on Wolf Mother's debut album today. Haven't heard it for a while. And wow, it's fantastic. Wow. Look forward to rocking with Wolf Mother this Saturday. They are playing. So, yes, have fun with that, folks. Um, Nicole's here. Good to see you. Hey, Nicole. Sorry. No, don't be sorry. Just as long as you're here, it's, it's good to have you with us. Uh, what do we got here? Rowan says, coincidentally, I posted. Naomi Hughes album in Discord a few days back. Nice, cool. Yeah. Was that, was that fused? Out. Yeah, that's a good album. If that's yeah. the one. I didn't see that. Um, I didn't see it. I, I see it scroll through, but I've got a lot going on this week. Uh, Bash says BCC thumbs up, which is cool. And Michael said cheers, no brainer track. So there we go. There's the yeah. there's the love for Michael picking that song. All right, next up, Conrad. It's yours because we're going to give you well, you're assigned the song "Crying Heart" from a band called Remedy. Uh, this is a Swedish band. It's from their upcoming second album, Pleasure Beats Pain, due out in May 24th. Uh, this looks to be at least the third single from the album that I can work out so far. Vinny nominated this one this week over on the Patreon land of things, so thank you for that one, Vinny. But, Conrad, how did you go with your assignment this week? <laughs> uh, sorry, Vinny. Sorry, Vinny. <laughs> this is, straight this away. is, this is ass. This is just... Wow. Generic. This is generic fucking bad, bad fucking AOR fucking, I don't know what you want to call this. Um, Like just bad Bon Jovi. It, it, it's generic. <laughs> it's dull. <laughs> it's boring. It's unimaginative. I've That's heard sad. this shit a hundred times cool. before and yeah. it's not done well. I hate to say it. It's just, it's just really uninspiring. Um, You know, I, if I want to listen to this type of thing, I'll go and listen to Bon Jovi, you know, I'll go and listen to, to Journey, you know, and I'll be I'll be rocked by Bon Jovi or Journey, you know, but this is fucking just, yeah, really droll. I'm sorry. So yeah. this gets a three from me. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Sorry, Vinny. Oh. Sorry, Vinny. Right. Um, but, hey, look, they're up there doing it and I'm not. Yeah. What can I say? Fine. Fine. No, no, it's all good. Like the, the point is that you get assigned a song randomly and yeah. just see what happens next. That that's the whole point of it. So yeah. it's just a, a bit it's of cool. fun to have. You know, um, I, I used to hate going into record stores, independent record stores, yeah. and there'd be that snobby fucking musical elitist wanker in the in the in the in the in the in the, in the independent record store who listens to some fucking underground obscure band and thinks he's the fucking the coolest fucking kid in the scene right and now i'm realizing i'm becoming one of those i was about to say you're like yeah <laughs> <laughs> now i realize i'm turning into that yeah the, the older we get no. the older we become no that works oh well yeah. we'll see hopefully no. maybe next yeah. week's song will impress you more but does anyone want yeah. to get a bat for it there's uh bell or, or jeff one or bell do you have any thoughts as a can uh, you defend this yeah i i do i thought yep. it was Yes, it was of a type. It was, mm. I think, AR. I think that's a fair yeah. description. If yeah. you're gonna, yeah. if you're gonna categorize it, mm. but um, I thought it was well done, 
And I I thought it was done with a bit of an original sound to it as well. Like it, it yes, it was you could categorize it, but it didn't sound like any other particular band. I don't think they sounded like Bon Jovi or um, Journey. Like I thought they sounded like them. And I, I, I don't know. I only listened to it twice today mm. and mm. I, I don't really liked it. So, right. yeah. Oh, well. Um, different strokes I, I, and different I, I kind of, for me, it different was. Different strokes and different words, whatever you It was wishy washy for me as well, to be okay. honest. I liked it. You liked it? I'll, I'll give it. Yeah. I won't. I won't. I'll, I'll be. Yeah, let's do the thumbs up, thumbs down. On the the one, so, so. I liked it. I thought it was pretty cool. I, I, mean, like I get. Yeah. I thought it was okay. vanilla, but I get what yeah, Conrad's very saying. vanilla. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's, it's not great, bad. It, it just doesn't excite. It doesn't excite. Yeah. And that's no. yeah. Fair enough. All good. Well, we've had some various. Let's see what the audience have to say about this one. Rowan, yes, it was fused. So back to the answer there. That was fused. Uh, Vinny yeah. says, just say where you are, Conrad. Wait for a knock on your door. <laughs> <laughs> From me. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, back over here for a second. Michael said, fused. Great. I will have some more love yeah. for that. Vinny says, you get to keep your thumbs, everyone else. So... <laughs> That's it. <laughs> uh, Michael said, I like the remedy tracks. I've got some love there. Roy's here saying, Crying Heart, still better than most songs on the radio today. So good to see yeah. you, buddy. Hope you're keeping yeah. well. Thanks for jumping in with some kind words on that one as well. All right, we are going to keep ourselves moving along. Dave, you're up next. So you timed your return nicely. Uh, so the, com from, the, the song for you is Anna with Scars, a band that you are familiar with, which is cool. Uh, this is for the, from the Melbourne band's debut EP slash album. They're calling it both. Uh, the Art of Letting Go is the title of it. Uh, this is about the fourth track released in some way, shape, or form, be it either via single or via video to promote this EP or, or album. This outfit has a few familiar faces in it from around the, the, the traps, and this was nominated by Jolie. Uh, this is her song this time around. <laughs> There we go. So, Dave, the floor is yours. How'd you go with your assignment? Yeah, this is cool. Obviously, ticks all the right boxes for me. I love this shit. Mm. Um, cool opening riff, the keys complement and accentuate the guitar, which is always nice. Those two instruments fit together beautifully. Um, the chords and the keys are left to ring in the verses, and they help to bring a nice mood and plenty of space for the glorious voice to sing over. That voice is really lovely. Uh, the lyrics cut through the more and more I listen to this. With each listen, I got more and more out of it. It was very thought-provoking. Pretty straightforward lyrics. I'm glad they're on Spotify because a lot of these smaller bands, you can't mm. get the lyrics to follow, so especially when the well, song starts to leave. It's records. That's probably why it's yes. happened already. Yeah. yeah. Good on them because that's a good move. But, yeah, it's cool to follow along with the lyrics. Mm. Um, there are some nice short instrumental sections in between sections, but nothing too prolonged and no actual solo from keys mm. or guitar. And I, I didn't miss it at all. It wasn't needed. I thought, yeah. I listened to it a few times. Like, holy shit, there's no solo. And it hasn't, like, hit my guitar nerd withdrawal shit or whatever. That's cool. But, um, yeah. yeah. So no, you don't always need a solo, which is cool. Mm. Um, beautiful song about a not-so-beautiful topic. Um, yeah. I am keen to hear a lot more from this band. Um, yeah. It's cool, cool song. I haven't heard anything bad from them yet, and hopefully I never do. <laughs> so more songs from <laughs> Anna, which is good. <laughs> okay, yeah. Big nice. thumbs up. So I have a, a quick question for you, Dave, because I know that you're – this is definitely – like it, sometimes you get lucky and you get a song that just lands in your lap that just fits your wheelhouse completely. What do you think of the – um? because I'm oh, I'm going to sound like a, a bit of a prick here, but I know Thamelco was involved in the mixing and mastering of this one. What do you think of the mix and the master of it? I, wasn't I, I liked I was it. Thinking. Everything came through, like the guitars and the keys were all balanced and the um, vocals were nice on top. I'm not much about fucking production, man. You're asking the wrong person. But, yeah, everything sounded cool to yeah. me. Oh, it's just that for me, it sounded a bit too blended. I think the mids were a bit too, yeah, just it, it got a bit I, I don't know scary. what you're saying, dude. No, oh, fair enough. <laughs> it just, it, it, <laughs> just thought I'd bring it up because, yeah, I usually, the thing is that I adore Thamelco's mixing work usually, but this time around, it's like, eh, not, not as punchy as I wanted, but that's just, that's just me. Um, eh. Eh. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. thumbs up, thumbs down. Let's do the rounds. Who liked the song? Who didn't like the song? I, I, it, I like the song regardless of. Didn't hear this one. Okay, cool. Sorry. That's all right, Darren. It's all good. I didn't um, listen to mine. I'm sorry. This is for you. Perry. That's okay. That, like, that's there's nothing wrong with that. I know you got a lot on your I plate bet. over there, so just do whatever you can, man. It's all good. Thank you. Um, from here, Michael says, "I love this track. Sounds great too." So there we go. Vinny says, "I enjoyed Scar straight to my playlist." Unlike Conrad, has to rub the lotion on the skin or gets the hose again. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
But Bear Jolly calls. is speaking of, it's great other songs yeah. too. I'd go see them live, which is cool. Nice to hear that, Jolly. I'd Their album them live. EP is out now so if you do want to check out more of the band you can go and listen to the art of letting go all five tracks are there i think for your enjoyment now all righty bell next up is you with the track we are shadows from a band called kitty um there's a link in the description and the comments now so go and check it out sorry uh michael says his production and mix style choice by design i'm not sure exactly um gotta have more listens yeah it's an interesting one i did yeah, just sonically it was a bit interesting to me but anyway that's enough of that one we've covered that one so this bell uh bell's track kitty we are shadows again link in the comments and the description box uh it's this is a canadian band it's the second comeback single single which follows eyes wide open the previous one the band have been away for 13 years and have a new album called fire due later in 2024 no date for that yet uh, but yeah, so the, the, the fine return for these guys were big a little while ago. But this is nominated by Darren. So, Darren, if you hear this, is one of the songs you put forward in Patreon. So, Bell, how did you go with this one? I didn't think much of this okay. on my first listen. Yep. I don't know. Maybe I was, I, I don't know. I just I was like, eh, nothing's really standing out here. It just, it's a bit generic and it wasn't bad, but it wasn't. Hmm. It didn't have a wow factor, but because I, I listened to it a few more times, it really grew on me. Cool. And um, I just came to appreciate it, it, you know, more and more every time I listened. So may maybe it was just a mood I was in or something when I first that heard happen. it. I was that is like, definitely Meh. a thing. Yeah. But the mood yeah. you're in with your song can definitely color your opinion of it. Yeah. Absolutely. Because mm. even the second listen, which was, I don't know, some hours later or the next day mm. or something, I thought, oh, actually, this is this is actually really good. So, yep. um, which, you know, is a relief to me because I don't want to, I don't know, come Did on and rip it apart or anything. Because I don't think it would be when you have to do that, Kim You've got to be honest, though. You have to be honest. That's the <laughs> exactly. rule. Exactly. Yeah. So I don't. I can be honest and be mm. um, and praise it. So, um, what stood out for me is that um, all right, I better just read because I'm not in a good way here. <laughs> <laughs> it's just easier if I read. Oh, here we go. Um, all right, so it kicks off strongly, setting the tone for the song. The switch in feel between verse and chorus, uh, and the chorus having that cool relaxed swing and the verse is holding down the tension well that was a great contrast there but still very cohesive um yep um all the vo all the vocals are excellent all styles that is uh, the singer has quite a sweet voice um In but with a rock edge yeah. mm. um and and i don't just mean when she growls i just mean just she's singing um she's just a good rock singer yeah. Um, but I found that she also somehow retained that sweetness when she was doing, and I assume it was her. I didn't watch the video or anything. It was her um, doing both, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. So I assume, yeah. So she still sounded sweet <laughs> while she was okay. growling. That's cool. Which I thought was awesome. Um, Very cute. It was, but not in a... Mm. Cutesy wootsy way, just mm. cutesy wootsy. I don't know. Way. I don't know how to say <laughs> this. Is why I should follow the script. Um, <laughs> it's just okay. So, oh, I should shut up, but I'll just say it anyway. No, um, no, please don't. This is very entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, I lost my What was I going to say? Oh, cutesy. okay. So I find that. When, all right, so I'm being very mm. diplomatic. No, potentially controversial by saying oh. this. Okay. I think when females use harsh vocals and growls, yep. it can, because it's not very feminine, let's face it. It's mm. very, oh, it's quite really? a masculine, th yeah, it's quite a masculine oh. sound. And I, I and think I it's evolved to here and there. Yeah. That. I think it has evolved. Yeah, yeah it's, evolved. it's, evolved. it's but you got some about, great girls doing it. There are girls doing it really well. I know. Oh, I know. Yeah. And I'll, the best ones are Canadian. This is just a personal preference. I like okay. it here and there. 
Yep. Um, but the thing I like about female singers is is their femininity in their voice, mm-hmm. in their singing. Yep. And men oh. can't bring that to yep. they just can't bring that. They can bring no. growls and all of that. Yep. And they do mm-hmm. it well, but and and we are not, you know, it's an art and it's they gotta work hard. Men or, mm-hmm. or women have to work hard to kind of do it. And I appreciate it as the type of singing, but I just I don't know. I just okay. So this singer, her sounding like a, a female and doing it, it's sort of like the best of both worlds. Yeah. I, yep. I just thought it was I actually liked hearing it. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. No, I get I get that. That's cool. Yep. If that makes do I, am I Yeah, no, I get it completely. I yeah, I get what you're saying. Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I agree in a lot of ways. So yeah. 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 I'm glad I'm glad a, a woman could actually say that because if I said that, I'd be fucking shocked. Oh no, I, I know, and I feel like I should be supporting women doing whatever no, they but, want. Yeah, and I do. I, but but I think at the same time, no, honestly, I think that opinion is across the board, but no one has the fucking balls or lack of balls to say it. <laughs> <laughs> Not in this show. We just say it. Uh, I'm glad I have balls and lack of balls. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. All right. Um, all right. So on with the song. Um, the harmonies in the chorus yeah. were fantastic. Yeah. Um, the vocals in the chorus, they just really saw and they just lift the whole thing. And musically there's space for them to do mm. that. Um it's just the song is just rich with great rhythm choices, interesting interplay with the drums and guitars, uh, catchy melodies, uh, moments to breathe here and there, mm. um, to pause for a bar or two. So, as a listener, you can reflect on what you've just heard um, before it launches into the next part. Um, it's nothing new, but it's uh, effective and smart mm. use of your. A fairly standard template um, of a yep. song. Um, yep. They've just kind of gone. All right, this is what we're going to do. And I mean, I don't know how they went about their writing, no, but, but they did it well. Yeah, they've just turned. Yeah, they've just created a really great song. Um, and anyway, so I, I feel bad that I initially missed judgment, and I'm so glad that I sorry misjudged mm. it, and I'm so glad that I. Um, I guess was forced in a way to keep listening to well, it yeah. Um, yeah. because of this. So um, I would have missed out on a really, really cool song. Uh, I've never heard of this band, by the way. I, d- I didn't know um, okay. there they go. were around. But, yeah, mm. so thumbs up to um, Kitty and Darren. Thank you. Cool. All right, well. Let's do the rounds. Thumbs up, thumbs down, all the usual stuff here. I'm yep. going to give it a thumbs up as well. I, yeah. I enjoy it. Yeah, you can hear this one. Sorry. That's all right. Yeah. All good My home right. country. I apologize. I've, I've known them about them for years. Yeah. I think yeah. I had the first album spit years ago. Yeah, they came out in 99, I think it was, or 2000, somewhere in there. Yeah, uh, it was right around the time movement. I came out. Yeah. yeah somewhere around. Uh, but yeah. all female I bands do that. You didn't know they're all females. All oh, females. not just the vocalist. No, all of them. Yeah, I'm really going to start all watching all these videos. Things. That might uh, help cool. all. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it just probably maybe. would help a lot. All right. <laughs> Noted. All right. Let's yeah, see that, here. Yeah. Go see Audience, it. Vinny's giving it a thumbs up, which is cool there. Michael says, Kitty Track is a banger. I loved it. I got into the, I got into it first. Let's grab my attention. So there we go. Yeah. Jolie says, is Kitty the band Marilyn Manson discovered? Or... Maybe, I don't know. No, no. I have heard of this band before. I don't know why. Yeah, I, I don't know if I'd do quite that far because it was all sort of similar era, but I don't think Manson was discovering bands that early on. Um, Very different starts. Yeah. Manson. Rowan says, hook me by the end, which is cool. Bash has gone meow, thumbs up, so there we go. And uh, Jolie's gone, love that Kitty Cat song. <laughs> laughing out loud on that one all right cool <clears throat> which means that i my choice for this week is last but i don't know it depends on your taste could be least could be not least anyway um this is the song rise up from a band you've probably heard of called some 41 link in the comments and the description box as always this is from heaven cross hell which is out now uh was released at the end of march i believe uh another canadian band so back to back on that front this is their eighth and final studio album it's a double album this time around one album being their more sort of pop punk style uh from the early days the second album being more of the sort of metal more infused side of their catalog from later years as they went on 
this was the second single that came from the hell side of the whole proceedings here. Another track from Michael that made it into the top five uh, for our Hot Rocks playlist, uh, which I talked about in the post earlier today. Um, I'm not a huge follower of, of Sum 41. I remember when they first came out into the scene and everyone was like, oh my God, this you know band's going to blow up. And they did for a while. And then once that sort of initial hype went away, I didn't really pursue any any serious interest in them. Um I've always known they've had more, you know, just from interviews and that, con, you know, contemporaneously when they released the debut album, that they were always talking about, you know, one of the, the guitarists was wearing an Iron Maiden T-shirt and, and the soul out of the pool and that. And then fr from yeah. there, it was cool. They had, you know, metal, you know, origins behind them. They decided to go in the pop punk direction. This one, this song in particular, had more bite than I was expecting, to be honest. Now, it's still, it's still got the pop punk, you know, thing that they do, which it's their bread and butter kind of thing. But this one has a bit more edge to it. Um the chorus packs a nice bit of punch. I like the, the the chunky riff in the chorus there too. It's got a big hook as well, which is nice, and and, and some good use of harmony in there in there too. So like the chorus really does sell this song nicely. It's all still firmly what you might expect. I don't think they're breaking any sort of boundaries with their style or or your expectation of listening to this band if you've heard them before. But I think that on this one, there are little points of difference. Like there's a scream from uh i think the singer's name is whitley i could be wrong there forgive me but um but the the vocalist he does this scream in the song it's like oh hang on i didn't quite expect that one that one adds they put it back in the mix but it works and it's a nice little sort of accent to things gives it a heavier edge again and there's a little piano bit in there too which is a nice little bit of contrast or everything else going on around it's a, it's a like maybe 20 second little bit in there which um just sort of breaks the song up nicely even though it's not a long song it just does really well all in all, it's not anything that greatly shocked me per se. It's just what I what surprised me, I guess, was how much I ended up enjoying it in the end. Now, it's not something I'm going to go rushing out and going, I've got to let, listen to the rest of the band or this album or whatever else. But it is one of those things where now that I've heard this song, when it comes on, if I hear it again in the background, I'll actually go, okay, cool, yeah, and, and be happy kind of thing. It's one of those ones where that, that familiarity is a good thing, not a, oh, fuck, not this again kind of thing. So I, I enjoyed the song. It was a good song. Um, it's one of those things that, yeah, if time permits, I'll be curious, something I'll check out the album, see what it's like in balance and, 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 you know, get both sides of the coin for this one for the final release. They've decided to call it a day on their own terms, which is, you know, you've got to give, give credit where due for that as well, not pushing it too long. Um, and also just a, a quick note on the video. I think the video was fun. Got a few laughs in there too. Had noodles from, um, offspring as the pilot of a plane. And it just was, you know, a bit, a bit silly, but you know, you had, um, they were talking about it being an 80 something hour flight and you've got different, you know, r random bits and pieces. And then like Santa loaded drunk in the fucking airplane toilet with, you know, Christmas lights and stuff and just it, things that make no sense, but makes it entertaining at the same time. So they're just, I think it's a case of, you know, fuck it. <laughs> it's the last album. You can do whatever you want. And they're, and they're having fun with it, which is, I think that's the infectious part of the song and the video is that it is actually fun to take it in. It's not the most serious thing in the world. It's just a bit of fun to have. And I did enjoy it for what it's worth. So for me, I'm going to give it a thumbs up. I thought it was a cool song. Not like I said, tearing the walls down, but no, it was, it was good. It was fun. I enjoyed it. So Michael, thank you for putting it forward. I enjoyed it. Uh, I'm just see what the rest of us thought of it though. Anyone, anyone else go thumbs up, thumbs down in the middle? Where are we going to land? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I thought Dave is, oh, okay. Who wants to rebut me? What, what don't you like about it? I it was better than I thought it would be, but I just can't give this fucking band a thumbs up. I hate them. I hate fucking Sum Forty One. I hate Blink One Eighty Two. I hate all these fucking number alternative rock pussy bands from the late fucking nineties. They're all fucking crap. But this was better than I thought it was going to be. I thought, Shit. fuck me, it's going to be the same wimpy bullshit we got from the fucking nineties. Yeah, it was better than I thought it, it would be, surprising. but nah. This yeah. band sucks, fucking dick. <laughs> Oh, well, I think that'll do it. Um, right. What do we got here? Rowan says, this sounds very good. No, I suck dick as well. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't into that whole pop punk thing yeah. either. Pop punk, homo shit. Oh, I didn't get it. Either. I wasn't either. <laughs> I didn't like mine. The song. I thought it was good. Yeah, this song's all right. Vinny likes the song. He's gone uh, really up and about kind of song, so thumbs yep. up. But I'm with Dave on that one. This style doesn't really sit with me. So overall, there is a yeah. lot of, you know, it's not our, not our um, traditional. It's not our bag, no. baby. I would I would happily listen to um Sum forty one forty one over yes. Blink one eight two yeah, any day of the week. It's all teenage yeah, dirt bag any shit. day of the week. That's, oh, not that shit. that's not even a hard call, Jeff. That is as easy as it comes. Yeah, all right. That's what I thought. Yeah. So. I know. Moving on. Let's time to go to build a playlist, the Ingve Malmsteen Polydor Years edition. Round one we did Rising Force, and out of that one. 
We had a tie for the uh, top votes there. So Bill and Dave, or sorry, were in second. Jeff, sorry, took, took out first spot in first round. So now we're going to go to Marching Out, which is round two. We did this one last week. Jeff chose I'll See the Light Tonight. This is tracks from Marching Out. So just to preface this, we're going to go through the first five solo albums of Ingram Almacene's crew, what we're calling the Polydor Years, as coined by Jeff. From each album, we're going to pick a song each, and then we get the audience to vote on which song they like the most out of that bunch. So, yeah, the after after round one, the total scores were Jeff was on 50 points, Dave and Bell were tied on 35, Conrad was on 20 points, and I'm loading up the caboose on 10 points after last week. For round two, we did tracks from Marching Out, and Jeff chose I'll See the Light Tonight. Conrad chose I Am a Viking. I chose Don't Let It End. Uh, Bell chose Disciples of Hell, and Dave chose Soldier Without Faith. This rotates through whoever goes last the week before goes first the new week, so Dave will get first vote in a second. Just to quickly recap things here, though, uh, on this one, Dave... This time around, not quite as much joy for you. You got 10 points because you put a song in, but there were no votes. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, wow. So that's how it worked, um, which means that I came in second last, though, with one vote. I got 20 points for my choice of Don't Let It End. <laughs> um, Bell managed to actually, for someone who struggles with this style of music, traditionally speaking, she's doing all right. Uh, she got 30 points for Disciples of Hell which means it comes down to Jeff and to Conrad between who got the most points. And again, Jeff took out top spot, so he's got 50 points again with I'll Set Light, which means Conrad got 40 points for I'm a Viking, so two. But actually, it was only one vote split in those two songs, so you both wow. did very, very well there. All right, so for new totals, I'm still loading up the back end of this thing. I'm still on 30 points, so I'm falling behind. Dave has jumped up to 45 points. Conrad is now on 60 points with Bell on 65. So Bell is in second place with Jeff way out in front already on 100 points. So I think it's a, ga a case of who can catch Jeff, but we'll see what happens. Um, so to that end now, we're going to pick songs from the album Trilogy and see how we go from there. Dave, you went last last week, so which means this week you get to go first. What song are you taking from, from Trilogy? And if you have any thoughts on the album just quickly, then feel free to give those as well. Okay, firstly, how cool is the artwork? Yinri is Great. killing a three-headed dragon with a guitar yeah. solo. Yeah. That's fucking I, I, awesome. That, that was cool. I that. that is cool. This is yeah. shit right there. That's that would make me buy this song. album if I saw it when I was a kid. That is just yeah. fucking cool. There we go, Jeff. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 You know, I, I, <laughs> That's the one. It's cool. That's pretty, it's yeah, cool. it's cool. Uh, <laughs> it's very um, much what you expect. Very D&D, &D. yeah. 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 Now, I have never heard this album before. What? And honestly, I understand why people like the first two albums because it starts really? out great and then it gets a bit same same as it goes along. Lyrics aren't as engaging as what we had on the previous album either. Guitar stuff mm. is all cool all the way through. The artwork is awesome, but I'm going with the first track. You don't remember? I'll never forget. I'll take the second track, but that's what I'm going with. You don't remember? I'll never forget. That one's okay. Cool. cool. That's the so, first. Track. Yeah. yeah, that's the first track. Yep. That Sorry, song I'm is just... um that's that was my fucking marriage. Anyway, wow. Um... <laughs> <laughs> hang on, hang but, on. You know yeah, what you yeah, said before? Of... That might be a good thing. Anyway, <laughs> it, honestly, it sums up the album for me in a way. I, I remember the first song. Yeah. I don't remember the rest. Well, there was there was a change of vocalist in this one as, as well. We had Mark. Um, yeah. Uh, this is the, first the combination album. on the second album was that was the winner game. right there. That was the money shot. Yeah. Yeah. Ingve discovered him. Wow, okay. This is his first album ever. Yeah. And he, and, and he he signed he's American and he um yeah. he uh but this Ingrid liked him actually. But after this, you know, obviously the, the idea of singing with Joe Lynn Turner who used to sing with Rainbow, and of course Ingve loves you know Rainbow and the you know yeah. the yeah, who's singing on this? thing. I'm Mark Bowles. Sure. Mark Bowles. Sounds a lot like Michael Sweet from Striper. A lot. Oh, like my mate. Oh, well, maybe that's a lot like my friend. Striper. But, but Ingrid got him back for at least two or three more albums after yeah. this. I think he was later, a good later on. I, I think it was a good fit for Jeff, a, a good follow up to Jeff Scott Soto from the. Yeah. I, thought it, yeah. I thought it worked well. But anyway, Dave has put his points in, his point in. Jeff, which song are you taking? Any thoughts on the album? Well, I love this album. Like I said, I, yep. I love the Polydor years. That's why I did the. Those yeah, first five idea. albums, yep. shit on everything else that came after that. Um, 
You know, like he was with Polydor, and I don't know why yeah. what happened. After Polydor, Electra said, "Yo, yo, yeah, we'll, we'll get you. We'll sign you up." They yeah. signed him up for one album, then kicked him ass. And I thought that that was it. <laughs> Done. Yeah, didn't yeah, last you're long. In the can. No. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, even they saw it. Um, so look, uh, obviously this album I think is a strong album. It's uh, Dave is kind of right. There's a, some songs in the middle where the album just sort of dips mm. a little bit. Um, I'm actually going to go, believe it or not, I'm going to go with a song that I think may be controversial. Um, I'm going to go with it, the instrumental, Crying. Ah. Because I think it's probably the most emotive track on the album. Mm. It's wow. very, cool. very emotive. Mm. Yeah. Uh, okay. And it does sort of, there's a real sadness to it. You mm. understand why it's called Crying? Mm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Wow, okay. I like that cool. one. Yeah. Nice. All right. Two down, three to go. Conrad, you're up next. So any thoughts and what song are you going to take off of this one? Um, yeah, I thought the vocalist sounded a lot like Michael St Sweet from, from Striper, yep. actually. Uh, I thought it was at one point. I was like, hang on, is this Michael Sweet on here? Um, sounded, yeah, definitely like him. Um, look, I, I found this sounded dated. Um, it hasn't aged well. Mm. Um, I think other things came out that same period that have aged better. Yep. Um, that's, get that. you know, same year. Um, so yeah, uh, maybe slippery when wet probably sounds better. The same sort of stuff. Yeah, that's that's but, almost timeless. That one. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think yeah. This, but um, I, I'm going to go with the last track on. I think it was an in, another instrumental track. The oddest is something. Yeah. Oddest oh, the trilogy five. Trilogy five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll go with that. Um, because the others were just a bit syrupy. They were just a bit sort of that that form, yep. formula formula formulaic formula formula. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I get it. But sort of followed a formula, and, and I think yeah, a lot of them drinking. sounded the same. I think a lot of them sounded the same. So this one was a bit different to the others. So that's why I'm yeah. going with it. All right. Cool. Okay. Um, unfortunately, yep. Sorry, go on. Yes, that's it. That's all I've no, got. Okay, cool. All right. Unfortunately, Bill, you have to wait a little bit longer because I get to go next. Cool. Um, cool. You'll go first next week, though, Bill. So that's how this will rotate through. Look. This time around with Mark Bowles on vocals, I think he's a really good follow up to Jeff Scott yeah. Soto. It, you know, it, it's a it's a nice follow up to the last album all around. Good songs, good performances, all that kind of stuff. That so said, I felt Joe like, Lynn, when did Joe Lynn Turner come in to the picture? Next, next time, next, yeah, after right. after this yeah. one, right? After okay. this one, yeah. Okay. Um, Heaven tonight, Heaven tonight. That was the big hit he had, wasn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah, Heaven tonight. Yeah. Well, we will get to that very very soon. I'll shut up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um look i i agree with conrad that this is aged pretty poorly by comparison to a lot of other albums from the same time and and i thought listening to this one as well that there was i felt for me listening to it compared to the previous two albums there was, there was a bit more ego involved in the guitar playing ingve was producing this one and i think yeah. it shows a bit um now, it, it just feels like this is the Ingve show now, and the only one that gets sort of second billing is uh, Jens Johansson on the keys. I think he's the other one that can sort of push Ingve. And there's a there's yeah. a song in there which has a nice sort of one-two solo battle kind of thing, which is very, very cool. Like, those moments are, are good when they when they come up. But that also mm. makes you feel like he's the only one that's sort of got the ability or the right to push Ingve along a little bit when you listen to the album overall. This doesn't have as much space as the previous one did in, in, in terms of writing and, and you know, space with vocals, that kind of thing. That said, it's all well written, well performed. Don't get me wrong, I'm not, I'm not shitting on it. It's just I'm noticing differences already on this album, you know, versus the last two. Like Dave said, you know, it doesn't quite grab you as much as the previous ones. It, it does have those flat spots in there. My main takeaway is that it's solid, it's enjoyable, it's good to listen to. Um, but I'm wondering if this is like that beginning of the slide for me. I haven't really paid much attention to the early years, so I'm waiting to see what happens over the next two albums. But this mm. one was like, okay, I hope someone hits the brakes because <laughs> if you can just see it already sort of going, here's Ingve. And it's like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> whatever, um, that's, that's great. That's like, classic. Yeah. Like, I can it's, see it coming and I'm like, oh, it's coming. It's coming. Yeah, but not for a while yet. <laughs> so I'm just sort of hoping at a couple more albums before we hit that point. But that's it. These are proper, complete songs. It's all good stuff with big hooks, good melodies, all this sort of stuff in there as well. There's a mountain of guitar flash, which you expect. It gives you everything you want, need, and expect from a Malmsteen album and more at the same time with, you know, being more complete songs than we get much later in his career at all. It's just not quite as good as the previous album in particular. I thought 
um, marching out out of the three we listened to so far is the best for me. Um, but this is still I, a solid I, album. Uh, and I haven't disliked any of these albums. It's just that I'm making a note-by-note note sort of comparison as we go week by week through these ones. Um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I don't know how this is going to go because I'm obviously picking shocking choices as we go through week by week. <laughs> but um, for me, I'm actually going to go with one that I'm surprised it's still here. It's my first choice is still there, which is cool. I'm going to go with fire. Fire. I knew you were going to take that. Yeah. I, I don't think I'm surprising anyone with my choices because you're going to know which way I'm leaning on these things. I love the hook in it. Uh, there's almost like an Eddie Van Halen touch in the guitar work in there as well. There's like a, a little bit of a, a one, two thing yeah. there. I thought that was just a good, catchy, complete song. I thought that was one of those ones. And the hook, you can hear that chorus in your head still. Like that's a really good, solid song, which I enjoy. Yes, it was quite a lot I don't, I don't know if i've I fell put a head down because that was oh. <laughs> i was writing I, I, I was writing uh, who's playing in my head right okay, now. Cool. <laughs> that makes sense all right cool yeah. but anyway that's my thoughts uh without any further ado let's throw it a bell and see which way you're going on this one um yeah i'm i'm the same as dave i as far as i can remember i haven't heard this album but then i suppose it's less surprising <laughs> that i haven't heard it than, yeah than dave um but the thing that struck me first about this was the singer. I thought, mm. wow, this guy is amazing because I yeah. knew through doing this that it was a new singer to the previous guy. Yeah. Um, and I think he's actually a better singer than, what was his name? Jeff. Jeff Soto. Soto. Soto, 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 yeah. yeah. I yeah. think okay. he's perhaps not as expressive. Ooh. Yeah. But I think he is more... Um, accurate if that makes sense and i think I that you mean, probably yeah. suits uh ingvay's playing yeah it suits the music. yeah 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 he's a more more technical um i i think he also sounds like do i think all of his songs i don't think our jolly turner sounds like dio but i think he sounds but i also agree with conrad and when i was listening to this and i was listening to the singer i'm like yeah he's a little bit dio ish maybe that's just the vocal melody that that I'm getting rather than mm. the actual vocals, but he did remind me of someone, and I think it might have been Michael, Michael Sweet. Because oh, okay. when you said there it, you I'm Tracy. thinking, I think that sure. might be it. So okay, you know. cool. Well, there you go. Yeah, but he's a really, really good singer. So I'm not mm. sure what the problem was, Jeff. Why? Mm. Why he got the problem is Ingve. I'll tell you that. Oh, was Ingve? Yeah. Oh, okay. oh yeah. all right. Well, that yeah, yeah, that, that's, that makes yeah. sense. So, so to say, Jeff okay. and Ingve are at, they've been at war for years. And no. he won't, those first two albums, that's why they're not on streaming services because Ingve hates the guy so much, he's not going to give him any money from any of the wow. songs on the streaming. Yeah. So wow. Good. I meant yeah. this guy. I meant um, yeah. uh, oh, Mark Bowles. No, yeah. He likes Mark. They, they've done three albums together. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, really? oh, so they did the yeah. record. Okay. So what happened? Like, why did he not go on the next one? Because the Joe Lynn Turner was free, and they decided to work together, and that oh, was okay. too too big of a of a deal okay. to pass up. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Right. right. Okay, because yeah. Joe yeah. Joe Lynn Turner at the time was a bigger name, I presume. Yeah, yeah. 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 And Rainbow, Rainbow, yeah. Rainbow. 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 Mark Bowles yeah. was an unknown at this okay. point in time. Yeah, so. yeah, uh, okay. yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. Uh, overall, I did not enjoy this album as much as the last one. And even mm -hmm. I think the first one, um, yep. musically, I thought um, it, the songs were not as strong. Mm -hmm. In fact, I think, I don't even think there was one song on this album that made me sit up and go, oh, wow, this is a really cool song. Just okay, yep. There were grabs throughout songs of, mm -hmm. oh, that's a cool riff or I like the chorus line or whatever. Yeah. Um, but just as a whole, I didn't really like any of the songs so it was the case for me of pick the song that i liked most out of songs i didn't like yeah i get you man yep. yeah um and again for the third time in a row i get my first choice oh well, there you go i'm finding really incredible Mm. Yes, Jeff. How the fuck did you know? <laughs> that was on my list as well. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Can you pick the next one? Yeah. Yeah. Then, like, a, a, a sub game, going, a sub -game is for Jeff to predict who's who's picking what. It's mm. a sub game. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Like you got to send that to Andrew before we do the segment, and yeah, then Andrew okay. will let us know if we got it right. I, I yeah, that's actually that. not a bad idea. That's a, yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. Right. We'll, we'll put a pin in that one. That'll be a good one to do it. Yeah. All right. So just to quickly recap then. So this time around from Trilogy, Dave has chosen, you don't remember, I'll never forget. Jeff has chosen Crying. Conrad has tr uh, Trilogy Suite. I've chosen Fire. Bell has chosen Dark Ages. We'll do a post in the coming days to do a, a vote for you all on that one to get involved in the conversation here as we always do. Uh, audio Audience comments here. Vinny says, EDA 30 minutes, Conrad, stay where you are. <laughs> Going back to the top of the episode there. Yeah, not going <laughs> to happen. Not letting go, man. Um, <laughs> Which is cool. <laughs> Rowan says this album is a bit up and down. The instrumentals are great, and I think Fire is a really good track. But you don't remember? I'll never forget. It's the best track. So there you go. Um, yeah, motherfucker. Michael says, "Am I right that Ingve's manager was a bad player? A bad, I don't know, player, payer, ripped, payer, oh, payer, yep, and ripped off the band a bit." And there's an interview recently with Joe Lynn Turner where he discusses manager being uh, ripping off Ingve big time. I don't know about that. Oh, I honestly yeah. can't speak to that. That'd be interesting though to dig into that. Um, Michael also said uh, Scott Soto talked about manager not paying up too much. Okay, there's interesting thoughts okay. there. Uh, Rowan says uh, Bowles comes back later and then leaves and then comes back and then leaves. Yeah, he's yep. got a bit of a, a, a storied past <laughs> okay. in this project. All right, let's move on. So like I said, next week we're going to be doing Odyssey, so get yourselves ready for that one. So we'll, we'll update the playlist and all sort of stuff as we go through. But next week is Odyssey. That is the album we are going to be going through in this game next time around. All right. Time for Who Am I? Uh, this is the album edition, so we're all going to go through and do a Who Am I? We get 10 clues to see who guesses, you know, what album this is. It's all about albums, so I've just reset the comments here for the audience. Album or band? Album. 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 This is the Not album band. edition. Yes, album. album. Oh, so for this album. this round, it's albums. So make sure you think of, right. and when you, it's your turn, you do an album. <laughs> so right. it has to okay. be for an album. So we get... So David's it's up this week. Last week, Belle went first. She had Bon Jovi, New Jersey. Dave guessed it correctly. So now that wasn't planned, but Dave gets to go next anyway. Um, so basically 10 clues from Dave to see who gets there first, who guesses it first. Audience, you can throw in your comments, your guesses whenever you want to, but we're going to we get one guess each for us here on the show. And Dave, with that said, we know the game. The floor is yours. All righty. Album, who am I? As an album, I was recorded in Olympic Studio and Mayfair Studio in London in 1967 and in New York in 1968. Some songs took up to 50 takes as the band's front man was a perfectionist and the singer was so insecure about his vocals he often sung behind hidden screens. I know where I, I know where you're going. I gotta just a lot of the recording sessions involve guest musicians who would feature on some of the album's more laid back jam type tracks. The nature of these sessions would lead to the band's producer parting way with the band. Is this I'm gonna have to take a shot here. Is this um Jimi Hendrix, the electric ladyland? You got yeah, it. I so. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice one. <laughs> well done, Andrew. Well done. Yeah. Well done, Andrew. This is Julius. Let's check this shit out. Okay, it opens the wrong way. Oh wow. It's fucked up. It's really weird. That's, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. That's hard. But that's yeah. not the original Fuck. cover either, is it? No. Is no. It? Yeah, the, like that was clue number ten. The original cut, what well, was right? Oh, naked. The women. original yeah, UK yeah. album cover was was considered pornographic, yeah. and many of the stores refused yeah. to stock it. The original album photograph requested by Jimmy at the time was a lot more wholesome, and what we know as is the yellow face of that. But the original picture he wanted is smell the glove. <laughs> no, true. I said wholesome. What's that? That's wholesome. This is the band hanging, hanging out with a bunch out. of kids. Yeah. What? Yeah. How can that be pornographic? That's not. No, the no, 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 no. That's okay. what he wanted. He was he shocked wanted. when the album was actually released with eighteen bare-breasted women. Yeah. <laughs> that was um, the album cover. Yeah. yeah. What? Yeah. yeah. Um. <laughs> Comrades, Google it. Google it's it, dude. It's You're in the right position. Well, just, just 
just quickly here before we get too far into the weeds, Bash just said Jimi Hendrix about the same time as me didn't name an album, which is cool. Michael says, okay. nice work, Andrew. Great game, Dave. My brain imploded thinking it was Hendrix, but not quite quick enough. Uh, but Dave, you had more clues. So take us to the rest of your clues so we don't, you know, put that work to, to waste. Yeah. So what, okay. was, what else was in there? Um, okay, clue four. Many of the bass tracks were recorded by the guitarist. Clue number five, the album consists of many different styles, showing just how creative and diverse this artist was. Styles included psychedelia, blues, New Orleans R&B, 60s Britpop, and of course, hard rock, not mm. to mention some social commentary as well. The double LP confounded many critics upon its release, but is now viewed as the group's best work. It is their only number one album. Uh, number seven, the production of the album experimented with backmasking, which is reverse tape, like backwards messages, chorusing, echo, and flanger. Number eight, <laughs> one of my 16 songs has very prominent and famous use of the wah pedal. Uh, number nine, I was the group's only LP mixed entirely in stereo, and I was yep. engineered by Eddie Kramer and Gary Kegerman. Number 10 was about the album cover, and I just realized yep. Last week, Belle didn't get to do the rest of her Bon Jovi clues, I don't think. I thought we did. I don't know if we did. Might be wrong. I thought we did. I don't think we did. My apologies. If that's God, anyway, so it doesn't matter. I, know, I, I can't really do anything about it at this point in time because she's, she, she's run away. Um, but, yeah, so that was, that was fascinating going through that. But um, yeah, if I, anyone's uh, heard the next the next album, like uh, first Rays of the New Rising Sun, which he was recording yeah. when he died, yeah, that he, he actually built a recording studio which had sixteen tracks yeah. called Electric Ladyland Studios because yeah. this album spent went so over budget they yeah. actually decided to build their own fucking studio to realize Hendrix's actual vision for the next album. Yeah. It was oh, the clue yeah. where it was about how it just started to go off the rails and the manager left. That was what made me decide between yeah. this and the debut. So, yeah. Um, you know the most expensive album ever recorded? Chinese I democracy. know the most expensive album ever recorded <laughs> from Finland, but not Chinese in Chinese democracy. <laughs> Chinese democracy, Guns and Roses. <laughs> Yeah, that took that took forever to record. Yeah, and there's, there's a few hours money. Yeah, simply because the studio was hired, but nothing was being done because Axel was going through therapy because his personal yeah. life was fucked up, which is documented in the lyrics to that album. So okay. cool, right. it works out great. Um, the album's fantastic. <laughs> okay. All right, we're gonna open a can of worms. Here. I'm gonna keep this moving on. Bell, yeah. Dave yeah. raised an interesting point. Did we go through the rest of your clues last week after? Dave guessed your New Jersey album. Did we didn't? No, did we? Oh, no. Sorry, I feel bad now. As I do. You, do you have them handy? No. Okay. Shit. <laughs> okay. That's right. All right. So uh, on this note, Conrad, next week is you. So next week you get to do a, a album. Who am I? an album. Album. It's got to be an album and do the Who Am I format for an album. All right. <laughs> it can't be an okay. album. Okay. All right. All right. Speaking of Hendrix, I was in a bar. I was in a bar the other night. If you saw so Hendrix, I'm going to fucking murder you. No, <laughs> I couldn't have seen I'm not that old. Fuck off. <laughs> not that old. No, come um, on, motherfucker. You, you were born when Hendrix was playing. You were at fucking Woodstock. You were squeezed out. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, no, I was in a bar uh, the other night in Soho. Uh, as I said, yeah. I was DJing, DJing there. But uh, I popped into another bar, which I knew. Hendrix played his very first London gig at, and I popped oh, in. And there's, a post, nice. there's a poster of him on the wall yeah. and where he played, and you can kind of go and sit. And it's just this tiny, tiny, pokey little bar, yeah. it's really small. And he did like his first show performance there, and mm -hmm. you know he was called I, I down I think, by some friends. I think he was called in by some mates to come down and jam, and yeah. that's how it yeah. was. And came I've heard down stories and went about this. this. Apparently, Eric yeah. Clapton was there. And he walked yeah, out after the tiny second little song, bar and, and somebody tiny said, little where bar. are you going? He's like, I'm going home to practice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were scared yeah. of Hendrix. Yeah. yeah. Hendrix, he he yeah, gave the tiny, shit out of everyone. He tiny little bar. Right. He did his first yeah, first performance in this, this yeah. pokey little corner. And yeah. from that was it. From then on, it, it <laughs> basically everyone went, oh, <laughs> shit. Oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking and, God uh, has arrived. Yeah, yeah, and he's jammed with some other people. I think he was invited. It wasn't like it was his gig. He was invited down to jam with some mm. others, and he just played a few songs. And you know, yeah, yeah. and then 
there's, there's a poster of him on the wall and an, an explanation about where it happened yeah. and in the corner of where it was mm. and it's mm. tiny poky little corner and i was like oh my god this is this is you know rock rock and rock that's history awesome. right here oh, it's yeah, i was that shit man and send it to us like that, that all right a, yeah because right. right. sort of right. you're there like you, if you're doing those things take some photos and, and put some thoughts yeah. and we'll, we'll publish it in some way shape or form that'd be cool to have that man while you're just wandering around that, that'd be yeah yeah cool. yeah if you're able to do it yep uh, of course well i can pop in again it's on uh, the way. It's on the way to my my rock night, where I've no, got my my rock night going. Yep. So yeah, can do it again. Awesome. All right. Well, we're going to get on to the uh, main event of the evening now. We're going to keep moving along. We got King of the Roof, ninety ninety versus ninety ninety two. This week is round six. We are putting Alison Chain's facelift up against Black Sabbath, The Humanizer. Those are the two albums for your voting purposes this week i know that you'll all have voted already on this thing we're going to put quickly put the uh a reference track for each one into the comments now they're in the description box so if you miss it you can go and check it out whenever you're ready to do so but the two reference tracks i've given to you are from Alice in Chains, Man in the Box, and from Black Sabbath I those are the two tracks to choose from there um this is like i say round six of this whole series and Depending on how things go, one year is going to get a lead or it's going to be tied up yet again, which means we're just going to keep sort of – it's actually neck and neck all the way through. So we're going to see how things go if we match the audience. We have the audience vote already compiled. A, a big thank you to Bell, by the way, while we're all sort of waiting for people to jump back in here for doing all the counting and that for me. I do very much appreciate it. It takes a lot of the time off. Mate. My She's the, the, the secretary of the show, the PA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the yeah. treasurer. The secretariat. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'll tell you what. Without her, none of this is happening. So there we go. So exactly because um, I'm not counting any of this shit. It's all Bell. Really so this is where we get stuck into it. This one, yeah. The commentary that that played out with the uh, voting online for this was very much. It's got to be this album because of like people really had strong opinions mm. on this one. We'll oh yeah, that. this is tough. This one's we'll tough. It, I yeah. think so as well. But we'll go yeah. through the rounds. I've done a random draw as to who goes in what order this time around. And Jeff. You get to go oh. first on this one, my friend. So whenever you're ready, the floor is yours to give us your thoughts on which album you picked and why. Okay. Let me get my stuff here. Shit. That's right. <laughs> While you do that, the quick preamble here is that this is 1990 versus 1992. We polled the audience uh -huh. already for the top 10 albums of every year, and it's 1v1, 2v2. This week, it's 6v6, and that's why these you know weird battles pop up because it's just a popularity thing, not a genre thing. So anyway, right. Jeff, over to you. Yeah, so uh, Alice in Chains, Facelift, 1990, mm -hmm. Black Sabbath, The Humanizer, 1992. Um. <clears throat> So actually, I thought that this actually this panel here, I thought was actually a lot tougher than I thought it was going to be. I mm. thought it was going to be sort of a, a shit in, uh, and it isn't. No, it's not. Not at all. All right, so here we have two Titan albums going up against each other. Uh, in one corner, we have the legendary band, which started metal as we know it. Mm. reuniting with the myth mythical singer uh, that released two of the most influential albums of their career, Heaven and Hell and Mob Rules, yep. and, and trying to see if lightning can literally strike the same place three times. Mm. Uh, and then the other corner, we have a newcomer balancing the thin line between metal and grunge uh, and proving that this album would set the standard for years to come, not only for them, but the plethora of bands that would... Uh, follow and they would inspire so pitting these two albums up against each other uh where one moves on and the other one goes home mm -hmm. um is kind of an act of cruelty really but you know both of these albums deserve to win uh but alas we obviously only we know that only one will survive yeah and uh who's that just message me no it'll be conrad i reckon because he's dropped out so maybe it's that's gone yeah, no, it wasn't him. All right. Okay. So, no, we'll 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 come back back in. Um, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, we know only one of these bands is going to make it. And uh, so which one is it going to be? So the, the, the band doesn't come back, though, does it? It's just year by year. No, that, that's it. It's just it's yeah. album by album. Yeah, it's album just year by album. That's right. Yeah. All right, cool. cool. Yeah. That's right. I was confused so, for a minute. <laughs> that's all I good. remember the first time I heard Alison Chase. It was on Much Music. Uh, mm -hmm. And I saw the video of We Die Young, and I was like, who the fuck is this? Yeah. I was an instant fan. I went out and bought the album straight away. 
And thinking back, I know I had a CD player at the time, uh, but I actually bought this on cassette. I remember yeah. I bought it for my dad's car because he didn't have a CD player in the car. Yep. And I was driving my dad's car at the time. Uh, and most of my friends, that's all they had was cassettes as well. So it was kind of cool. I wanted, you know, some way of sharing this with, with my friends and stuff. And cassette it was. It made just made sense. Um, I thought that it was, uh, there was a, the album itself was heavy enough Mm. Uh, that it appealed to the metal fans, uh, and, but there was a groove in there, uh, and it appealed to a wide audience. Um, I don't know anyone that heard it back then that wasn't immediately impressed with what they heard. Um, the whole album is strong, uh, it's but if I'm to be honest, uh, I think it's the first three songs We Die Young, Man the Box, and Sea of Sorrow mm. that are probably the strongest, the strongest songs of the album. Yep. Uh, these for me are the definitely the A tier uh, of the album. The rest of the album is filled with what I would say would be B tier songs. Uh, I don't mean that as an insult or bad. They're, they're good, strong songs, especially like songs like uh, "Bleed the Freak," mm. "Love Hate Love." Uh, I think many of these songs have a real atmospheric, dark, moody, acoustic mm. passages and stuff that sort of pull the listener into the song um, and keeps them fresh and sounding, you know, different. Um, there's a lot of hard rock sensibilities here uh, that don't fit into the groove mentality that was present at the time. Uh, I, I don't think, I honestly think, don't, don't think that a, you know, Alice in Chains set out to be a grunge band. Mm. Um, you know, and we yeah, all know that yeah. they, they have I that don't even land. call them a grunge band. They're more of a metal band. Yeah. 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 Well, that's right. They do that's it on right. purpose. Everything is there for a reason, not Correct. by happy accident. Correct. But they were glam rock first. You know, mm. yeah. you go back and look at the They know what they're I fucking mean, doing. It's not a mistake. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I know, but they just sort of, they, they were in a, at the right time at the right They just got lumped time. in with the rest of a scene that rose at the same time. Yeah, they, they came from so Seattle, so obviously they grunge. Fuck that. Well, that's right. You know, but the other bands came from Seattle too, like Queen's record. They never got lumped into the grunge. Yeah, they were 10, 15 years earlier before the whole grunge shit happened. So obviously I not. I know. Anyway. But, but anyway, <laughs> um, look. As you said, and I wrote that, you know, they literally got caught up in the movement because of where they're mm. from and because their sound and image didn't fit the metal scene at the time. Mm. I think that they were happy to go along for the ride because of the popularity of those other bands at the time. Actually, it helped them with their early success and helped yeah. drive that. So that takes us to Black Sabbath, Dehumanizer. Mm -hmm. uh, so here we have the metal masters back at it, doing what many thought would never happen. The reformation of this version of Sabbath was only overshadowed by that other version of Sabbath that people said would oh, never happen either. <laughs> mm -hmm. yep. That's right. So, look, I remember buying this album the day it came out on cassette. It was late summer, and I was downtown with some, you know, and I ended up running into a couple of mates that were drinking outside on the patio of a local watering hole. They saw me, called me over to join them, and I went inside, ordered some drinks, while I was in there, I, I actually knew the order because I drank their lots. And <laughs> I ended up ripping open the cassette and said, hey, do you mind if, can I play this out on the patio? Sure. You know, Sylvia said, no problem. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. Nice. So what I say with, you know, and, and fucking listen, this is fabulous. Fuck, this is awesome. Getting drunk and listening to this shit. Anyway, mm -hmm. that's how I heard it. I don't really remember much after that, but I do remember enjoying it. <laughs> and if I'm fairly honest, I actually think I forgot and left. <laughs> Cassette there and had oh, to wow. back down the next day and get wow. it. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. I had to pick it up because I just yeah, I was fucking drunk. So yeah, the good um, night, obviously. Yeah, it was a good night. It was a good night. I don't know where we went after that, but we were there like pretty much until it got dark and then we left. Yep. Um, but um, look, I believe at the time that the dehumanizer uh, kind of back. Yep. Uh, is a album. It's a. It's a. It's a social commentary of its time this was 1992 um and De dehumanizer really is a product of its time uh, but it's also a product of where we were headed a, a warning shot to anyone who was smart enough to listen a deal created the tapestry yeah. uh, of, of lyrical content that is a mirror darkly uh of society at the time computers had taken over the world in the last 10 years since you know the last uh this era of sabbath was last together producing mm. music back in 1982. And I think the writing was on the wall of where the world was headed. The album kicks off with Computer God, which mm -hmm. is clearly 
what the cover of the album depicts, a world where mankind is being destroyed by its own computer computer creations. Uh, sound familiar? Um, yep. Now, to quote, to quote lyrics from the song, computerized God, it's the new religion, program the brain, not the heartbeat. Mm. And virtual existence with a superhuman mind, the ultimate creation destroyer of mankind. Mm. It's just, just sex thought provoking lyrics mm -hmm. from Dio. Yeah. Uh, and, and they were really ahead of its time. Um, in a lot of respects, just, just sorry, Jeff, in a lot of respects, Dio yeah. is usually supremely positive in his lyrics. It's like one of the darkest albums he's released lyrically. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think so. And it, 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 you know, it's not throughout the, the full not album, the but, thing, but, yeah. but but it's there. Oh, Conrad's gone again. Yeah. Um, Hi, Conrad. Yeah. Internet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but look, Dio was the master of writing thought provoking lyrics, and, and he did this a lot and if you listen you know to what was written and came out 30 years ago uh they they were showcasing a fear that was underlying society in the in the early 1990s people mm. saw what computers were doing and they were afraid people knew that they were the computers were replacing jobs they were popping up every, everywhere and it was no shit. Fear, and and mm -hmm. it was like you know it was a, like a, a look into our near future Computer God is a dystopian future um, that really is a, is a reality to where we are now in many ways. And yep. then you get into, after all, the dead, mm -hmm. uh, in parentheses. Um, it takes us in a different direction. Dio discusses the afterlife and what comes after. Is there life after death? Mm. Who knows? TV Crimes keeps the focus on fast, ryth fast rhythms and kicking ass. And this is a song about TV evangelists and how they use God to rip people off with false promises, false prophets selling a surefire path to God and everlasting life. God, the creator of the universe, life and everything, all powerful and almighty, but he needs your money. <laughs> too, too long has the TV evangelist. The evangelist needs your money yeah. for his capital. But, but it's true. But too long has the evangelist, the TV evangelist especially, used the platform yeah. to play on the, 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 mm -hmm. play on the sick, old, and the needy. Yeah, if we see them up for cash, well, shame on that, really. Yeah, fuck um, off. See, it's what it is. Um, but Letters from Earth is another cool song. It's hard to know what Dio was actually intending here lyrically. Is it a sci-fi song meant to be taken literally? Or mm -hmm. is it a metaphor from, for something else? And if I was a betting man, I would say that it's a metaphor because he's always written yeah. metaphors into his lyrics. Could I'd argue that, that. Yeah. Could it be that Letters from Earth are akin to someone actually praying to God, explaining all the troubles and the woe that they see here, and somehow they don't fit in. Who knows? I got the feeling of a time capsule. Yeah, could be. It, I mean, there's so many interpretations yeah, of it. But, exactly, you know, yeah. This is one of those songs, though, that has people have actually, uh, you can just forums about this song. What yeah. did Dio mean by Letters to Breath? Mm. There's a lot of different things. Master of Insanity, another kick-ass song. One of my favorites, actually, on the album. Um, the Master of Insanity. Ultimately, we are what we think. Time Machine, mm -hmm. Sins of the Father, probably two of my least favorite songs in the album, but not bad. Still decent songs. Mm. But I think they probably could have been left off and no one really would have missed them. Too Late. Honestly, the song Too That's Late is one. probably one of the best songs on the album, mm. in my opinion. Um this song actually for me sounds like it was like a B side off of something off Mob Rules. I think it was almost like it had a flavor, a feeling, an atmosphere, everything mm. about this song. You could have put it on Mob Rules and it would have fit in perfectly. But it fits um, here though. It does fit here. It does fit mm. here. Um, but there's something about the song that takes me back uh, and it makes me feel okay. like Mob Rules for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah. It just feels epic uh, like the songs from, from that era. Um, I think Really, this song is too good for its own good. And I won't spoil it for anyone who hasn't heard it. But mm. if you haven't heard Too Late, just go out and listen to it. Yeah. And then, of course, there's I. This is <laughs> another banger. Uh, another legendary song. Yeah. This song alone is worth the price of admission. Um, yep. yeah. I can't tell you how many people actually claim that this is their favorite song on the album. And for good reason. It's, it's one of my all-time favorite Sabbath songs. That's yeah. how long that is. Well, yeah. it is for me, too. So, me, too. Yeah. I, you know, it's just great. Mm -hmm. uh, Buried Alive. Uh, this is a, a good, strong song, but not as, I don't think it's a strong closer. I don't think it's a strong closer than it could have been stronger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, 
Personally, I think it, it, if it had been placed before I and they closed the album uh, it without, with I, yeah. it probably would have worked better. But I suppose that just is the way they did it. It just kind of keeps you wanting more. Mm. Um, I just don't think Buried Alive is that song. So when you take the consideration of everything I've said and given the scope of these two behemoth albums, as mentioned, both are worthy of winning, but only one can. Mm -hmm. I have to choose the album which I believe is the stronger album and the album that I reach for more often. And that should be no... Um, well, you should no one should be left guessing at any longer. I think it, I pretty much made my case. Yeah, I think so. The album is, yeah, it just has to be um, um, Allison Chase. No, it's it's Dehumanizer. Dehumanizer. <laughs> <laughs> Try to do a last and a bait and switch again. No, no bait and switch. No you bait were switch. not fooling us this time, no, Jared. No, no. <laughs> no, it wasn't Facebook. Look, I love Facebook. I think it's a great album. But Dehumanizer, to me, is the album that I'm going to reach for more often. Yeah, just simple, simple as that. So fair enough. All right, Dave, you have Thanks. the honor of following that up. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I know it was a bit long winded. Okay, I had notes, but fuck, fuck it. Um, I'm sitting here, I'm looking at the CDs. I got yeah. both. Um, I'm just gonna make it personal. Fuck it. I'm just gonna go ad lib. So, thirteen, my birthday. I got this. Which is the fucking uh, the slip case is somewhere, but it's got both. Yeah, wow, mm. that's cool. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. So awesome. this became a, a fucking everyday listen for a very very long time. Mm. Dirt obviously was fucking outstanding. Yep. And that's why I brought it. But when you get sick of dirt, you go back to the debut because I didn't hear the debut because mm. I was ten. So it's not as easy to find music when you're young. I've, I've explained my history before. But um, going back to this, um, Facelift has some of my favourite Alice in Chains, possibly more favourite than what's on Dirt, but collectively mm. maybe not so much. Je what Jeff pointed out, the first three songs are obviously fantastic. I absolutely yeah. adore Bleed the, Bleed the Freak as yeah. well, especially at 13 because that, mm -hmm. for some reason these lyrics really, really um, – Struck they made sense. Yeah. They yeah. made sense because you know you're 13, you're in your second year of high school, and that whole I want to see how you all bleed for me. You got a whole mm -hmm. bunch of new friends, and all of a sudden you realize that you're all just a bunch of cunts. You don't, yeah. The people I grew up with in primary school, the people that I still talk to today, yeah, and the people that you meet new in high school, they bring in all this fucking new shit into your life, and it just doesn't gel. You're not mm. the same fucking, you got all this fuck. You know, I went into the hip-hop world, and you got the fucking dance, fucking homo shit. It's not me, fuck off. And then, like, real thing, listening to the lyrics of that song throughout the week, I'm wondering why the hell did I relate so much to that song considering what it's about because it's not <laughs> a good fucking song. I was 13, <laughs> and I absolutely adored that song. Mm. I don't know why, and I think it's, you know, the look, the lyrics, the song structure, obviously all this shit. Like, I wasn't even playing guitar back then. I've never actually tried to learn this song. It's just a cool song. I've got to get on that. But then going through the rest of the album, it's such a moody, mm. more so than some of the stuff that I liked before, like Aerosmith, Guns N' Roses, Skid Row, yeah. Motley Crue. This is such a diverse listen. It's got the whole upbeat, fun, funky shit, and it's got the really dark, bear my soul, mm. be as honest as I can. I think this really shaped my psyche because I love all that shit. There's a massive musical spectrum. Mm -hmm. You can do so much and it gives so much and it's so cathartic and psychology, psychological. And yeah, it's a really important album in my life. So also in probably 1992, I saw Wayne's World and Time Machine yeah. <laughs> is on that yeah. that was my yeah. first experience with Dio's um version of Black Sabbath full stop yeah wow. I was a massive fucking Go Black ahead. Sabbath fan yeah. already Black Sabbath Ozzy Osman that was all there was period I was aware there was this little fucking gnome called Dio <laughs> Ozzy made some jokes about him in the tribute one with the tribute to Randy Rhodes says I'm Ozzy I'm Ozzy Osman not fucking Dio there was a bit of a rivalry 
Yeah, but they were. When it comes to Sabbath, it was all about Aussie. Yeah. Until 10 years later. Yeah. And I finally expanded thanks to Guitar World because they fucking all love Dio. Like, okay, I'm going to buy like Mob Rules. Yeah. I'm going to buy this. And I'm like, holy shit. That's where that fucking song comes from. This is Time mm -hmm. Machine. Like, mm -hmm. I instantly fell in love with this motherfucker of an album. Uh, <laughs> like, apart from Time Machine, there is Computer God, there is I, everything that Jeff mentioned. I won't double track, but holy shit. And in 1992, this is like the rebirth, one of many rebirths for this yeah, fucking band. Definitely. Yep. Yeah. Dude, you but, can't like, kill. They, were, they were firing on all cylinders. They had something to prove. 92, New World, Grunge is slightly raising its ugly fucking head, new, oh, like a whole glam thing, the Guns N' Roses, the Skid Row, that's all done, but like, we're not dead yet, motherfucker. I've read Tony Iommi's biography, he was really fucking stoked, inspired, and really wanted to make a fucking difference with this album, mm. and my God, it does not disappoint. It's been a while since I listened to this, and listening to both of these albums back throughout the week, um, it took me to different places in my life, like back yeah. in my very early teens, in my early 20s. And it was like, it's one of those moments of like, fuck, how far have you come, dude? Mm. And like music really brings up very vivid images. I can remember listening to Alice in Chains on my Walkman. I can remember like the sights, the smells, yeah. the people, everything from mm. you right. That's what music does, um, yeah. Yeah, I like I remember like working in Big W and finally having money. I could just go down to Big W and spend two hundred fucking bucks on CDs and walk out with a massive mm. fucking like the people at the counter for well, nuts. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. Yeah. It, and it's like which which album meant more at that time. It's, but yeah. the times don't mean shit because we're in twenty twenty four. And listening to these albums this week. To which album would I did I enjoy the most? And in my current state of mind, there are there are parts of Alice in Chains that I can't listen to. I, I listen to them, but the darker moments, I'm just like I can't go there now. If okay. it was Dirt, it would be a no contest. It would be an easy win for Dirt. But Facelift, it's like the songs I love, I will always love. The darker moments, I appreciate as a course of the album, but fucking. Sabbath this week will win because that album I could listen to it over and over again and enjoy the hell out of it. So I'm going with Sabbath. Wow. Okay. Completely off the cuff. I didn't even look at my notes. <laughs> wow. There we go. All right. So it's two zip so far, which is interesting to see how this one shakes out. And with that being said, next up from the random draw before is Bell. So what is that? What's happening there? Play playing music. Don't know. That's not from here. It's not from here. Go on. Sorry. Anyway, Bell. Up. Who did it? <laughs> Don't know. I but anyway, that. it's quiet. So now, Bell, the floor right. is yours. My... Are you going to decide this one or is it going to go on? I. But you'll have to find <laughs> out. I know. Mm, I can't wait. Right now. <laughs> Come on, Bell. All right. So I don't. I don't actually have a lot of notes, but I will read them. Um. So I'll start with Alice in Chains. Uh, I actually came to a realisation this week, and that is that I prefer facelift over dirt. Wow. And I know we're wow. not comparing these two albums. Yeah, but um, interesting. But yeah. we've listened to dirt so recently that it's yeah, really hard. Yeah, that's cool. To. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's awesome. That's interesting. Well, yeah. I think, honestly, that facelift gets a bit overlooked because dirt is so good. Yeah. 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 Well, I always yeah. thought. This is a debut yeah. album. Oh, yeah, this is a debut album starts out stronger. Exactly. Than yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's a debut album. Um, and I, I, look, I think that Dirt is still a better album musically, mm. but well, I don't know even know if I believe that now. Look, Facelift is a lot more uplifting, I think. And I think it's a case mm. of nineties Bell could relate more to dirt but 2020 bell much prefers music that makes her happy and i think there's more of that on facelift and yes it does get dark too i'm yeah, there's more well fun. aware yeah. 
her well aware where it goes dark. Um, mm. Love, hate, love is certainly <laughs> no uplifting. We die young. Actually, most of the album's dark. It's just presented in happy it, ways. It's, yeah, yeah. But there is fun it's stuff just, later on in the as you get yeah, further into the album. It feels yeah. more fun and uplifting than what yeah. it does overall as an overall listen. And and again, I feel like I can say that just after listening to Dirt so recently. Right. Um, yeah. 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 Oh, no, I mean, banging around. around. Oh, I don't know. Oh, it's them. Conrad's crutch. All right, mute yourself, dude. I don't need to see your car. <laughs> like, fuck off, dude. <laughs> anyway. I can't. I can't deal with that. Conrad. Sorry, what was that? It's, it's, it's like a church in the bench. I was just, see you. Ah, what am I looking at? Uh, um, what were you looking at? No, I just don't. No, yeah. watch it back and find out, Conrad, right, because we all got a, 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 a distinctive view. Anyway, uh, you, need, right. you need to <laughs> no, get a needle please. and thread. Then. All right. I also feel that um, this album was ahead of its time, and it took the world a few years to catch up and appreciate it as much as um, they did a few yeah. years after its release. Probably to have to do it, to be honest. Yeah. 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 Hence the reason they re I, I, re released it with the yeah mm, yeah makes I sense. I remember I remember that yeah I didn't mm. actually hear it until after I heard dirt as well. So. Yeah, a lot of people did. All right, Dehumanizer. So this is our ninety-two album, and mm -hmm. something strange happened this week when I when this came on directly after Facelift mm. on on the current listening playlist that we listen to. Mm -hmm. Um, so instead of moving ahead in time, I felt like I was going back in time. Back so you yeah, hear yeah. facelift and then dehumanizer comes on, which was two years later, but I felt that the years should have been reversed and then some. I get um, that exactly what you're saying there. I, I, yeah. I definitely agree. Yep. But I think, um, and it's funny because I've never felt dehumanizer felt, um, old, Mm -hmm. Um, but it's funny what these matchups make you kind of think about when they're sort yeah. of put next to each other like this. Yeah. Um, and, and it's, I don't know, I don't, I, I'm not trying to insult the human. I don't, I don't mean to say that it sounds old and even back then, but, mm. um, I guess it's Black Sabbath's classic sound coming through in a, their then Good current point. album. Yeah. Good point. They yeah. did, they did have a rougher mix overall as well. A bit more of a garage mm. feel, especially in the drums, that the way the drums hit through, different mix. Yeah. yeah. Not nearly as polished. It was much more raw. Like you compare the well, two it's... albums, one's polished, one's raw. Yeah, indeed. Indeed. Yeah. Less budget, yeah. I think. Maybe that's probably. it. Yeah. Maybe. Probably. I don't know. But that that's as soon as that came on like the first time, that's what I got. So mm. anyway, look, it, this is a special album for me um, because when it came out, it was my first real experience um, of enjoying Black Sabbath's music. Yep. Um, yeah. And at that time, going backwards, I never paid much attention to Black Sabbath because I always assumed that the best singer was Ozzy. Mm. So I actually had no idea at that point um, yeah. about Heaven and Hell or Mob Rules or any of the other non-Aussie mm -hmm. albums mm -hmm. because I just, you know, when you don't follow a band, you don't follow a band. Yeah. So I've learned a lot since then. Um, and I'm actually not even sure why I ended up with this CD in my collection. I cannot remember why okay. I got it when it came out. Yeah. Um, but... I do remember that it was one of my first CDs and it was played to absolute death and mm. it remains one of my favourite albums 30-plus years later. Yeah. Um, yep. So, anyway, we've all heard it. Um, I'm not going to review it. There's no bad tracks, no filler, and it wins my vote easily over facelift. Yeah. There we go. It's three to zip. <laughs> there we go. So that decides it. So in our vote, we'll get to the audience choice later on too. But it's going to be interesting if this one plays out. But we have Conrad and myself to go. Conrad, you're up next. Which way do you, are you going to follow suit and go with Black Sabbath or are you going to change it up and go Alice in Chains? Which way and why? Now, this is tough. It's very tough because mm -hmm. one's a debut and, and with that debut, they have their own sound. Yeah. You know, 
and they don't sound like anyone else. So that's, you know, that's, that's something you've got to take into consideration. It's like, oh, hang on. This is something totally original. Uh, the other, but the other thing's a bit more uplift. I, th I think dehumanize is just a little bit more uplifting. I think, mm. I think with, with facelift, it's just a bit dark. You've got to be in the right headspace for it, perhaps. Mm. Um, and it is, it is dark and it will take you into some dark places and, and it can be a bit depressive perhaps. Whereas I think dehumanizer is a bit more uplifting. Um, mm -hmm. Although the, some of the themes can be quite <laughs> depressing. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. mm -hmm. So uh, for me, it, it, it's it's dehumanizer for me. I think on the, I like the sound. I like the gritty, the production on this. I love the, yep. it's, just, it's just metal. It's fucking, it, it's something, you know, it's very metal. Um, and, and I, I really like it. I like the thundering bass about it, the chuggering bass about it, the feel of it. Is Vinny a piece on this, Jeff? Yeah. Yeah, he's, he came back yeah. on this one too. They, they yeah, really know that line up on this album. So they yeah. got that, that line up together, and it's yeah. just fucking brilliant. When I saw this on MTV, I saw TV Crimes, and I was mm. like, I was hooked straight away. I was just like, this yeah. is fucking awesome. I was just like, yeah, yeah loved it. And then got into, you know, After All and I, and I was like, ah, this is fantastic. Mm. So, yes, it's good. I'm going with the humanizer on this as well. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. No disrespect to Alison Chains because um, no. yeah, that's, a, that's a cracking record. And um, uh, Nancy, is it Nancy Wilson? Nancy Wilson from Heart? Yeah. I think it's mm. Nancy Wilson or Anne, Anne or Nancy Wilson. One of the, one yeah, of the Wilson Nancy, sisters. Yes. Saw. Saw Alice and Change in, in in Seattle in in like a mm. in a club I think it was, uh, I think it might be the show that's in black and white. There's that oh, show that there's that footage yeah, that's yep. in black and white. Yep. Yeah, and and where they do love hate love. Yeah. And Nancy Nancy Oran said it was literally resonating out of him. It was just fucking yeah, resonating the, the, out the of him. PA couldn't powerful. came up with the 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 chamber he had in his chest like it was. Yeah. Oh, so huge. It was, yeah. Just fucking, you could feel it resonating out of him. She mm. said that and went and saw it and was just blown away. And I think yeah. it's that show, the black and white show, and yeah. it is stunning when you watch that. You just go, oh, get fucked. This is on another level. So, yeah, mm. fair juice. But, no, it's going to dehumanize. All right. Well, it's a done deal, obviously, for our point of view. Now it's only determined if it's going to be a clean sweep or not. Now, for me, going into this one, um, this is easily the most gut wrenching fucking battle I think we've come across. Yeah, yeah. In the whole thing. Because yeah. for me, I love. I've both had worse. Albums. I've had worse. For me, this is Tough. what I'm doing. Like this is this is challenging. This is tough. I, I love them both to bits. I think they're both a bit underrated. To be honest, I think they are both underrated albums. I think when you mm. when people think about you know the best Sabbath albums, I don't know how many actually put the Humanizer up there, but yeah. I would. I go straight to Aussie here. I but I I loved I I liked Black Sabbath with Ozzy, but when I heard Dio, was like that's 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 something else like that. And so yeah, for me, in, absolutely, yeah. No, nah, um, I'm Dio. I'm fucking Ozzy. Yeah, well, we've Aussie. we've done that battle. You can check it out online. <laughs> yeah, we have. Um, um, but they both both albums, both that bands at this point in time have phenomenal vocalists like Wayne Staley, Dio, or Ronnie James mm. Dio. Like what the fuck we talk like two all time vocalists. Um, mm. Both have great lyrics. Both have great storytelling. I love the attitude in both these albums. Yes, they take you to both places, but at the same time, they're both quite dark. Um, Alice in Chains, you have We Die Young, Man in the Box, See a Sorrow, Bleed the Freak, Love, Hate, Love, Confusion, and many more. For Black Sabbath, you have Computer God, After All, TV Crimes, Letters from Earth, Too Late, and The Mighty Eye. Just for record here for context, I was one of those songs. You know how you have those songs? When and I was talking to Jody about this earlier tonight, who says hi by the way to everyone. Hey. Um, but I was talking to Jody and she was having fun at my expense because I get excited and get chatty and, and carry on. Which you know, if you know me, you fucking know that by now. Pretty much everyone here knows that. But um, but the I was saying to her that that I is one of those songs that if you put it on and you get interrupted thirty seconds in, you'll go back to the start of the song. If you get interrupted two and a half minutes in, you go back to the start of the song. <laughs> yeah. You it's have so good. To that song so good. from beginning to end, <laughs> and when I was driving around and and yeah, I used to crank the oh. fuck out of that thing. Like Fern Tree Gully must have hated me when I was driving with her. With that, <laughs> <laughs> I love that lyric. I'll smash your face in, in with a, a smile. smile. Like, yeah. it's so 
fucking good. Yeah. Like that is such a powerful moment. Like that yeah. that whole song is just a wow. Yeah. And like Jeff said, that song makes it worth the price of entry alone. Um, mm. But that said, Alice in Chains has things like when you open up with Die Young, like yeah. what the fuck. Um, on a debut album, that's how you start your career. Like, yes. yeah. what a fucking statement. And yeah. And that video too was, was yeah. awesome. Yeah, exactly. The whole thing. And and what they did, I know they got put into the grunge category, but what they did was so unique. The the vocal comp like pairing of Jerry Cantrell and, and Lane Staley was yeah. not been heard in the metal world before. Like really no. hadn't. Those those note choices, that styling. I I yeah. often I often I often refer to those two as the as the, the the Simon and Garfunkel of mel of, of harmonies yeah. in the metal world. Yeah, yeah. Totally. The metal world. Like nobody like, did it like those two motherfuckers. No, and still no. really don't. Like no, no. one yeah. does those minor thirds. The no one does those harmonies. You know, yeah. they're yeah. like the Everly the Everly Brothers of rock. It doesn't you know? fucking yeah. happen before or after. Yeah. That band yeah. is so no. unique. And they are, yeah, and yeah it, it's so special mm -hmm. and. So to me, to try and pick one of these two albums is basically an exercise in futility. Like, you just can't. Yeah. Um, yeah. But as we do, we have to find a way, so on and so forth. So it came down to little things for me, like really fucking nitpicky things, me being a picky bastard however I could. And it comes down to two things in my mind. One, I think one of these albums has held up slightly better than the other one and I think has more songs to stay with you for longer after the final note rings out. But even that is fucking tight. Like, I'm talking about the slimmest of fucking margins here. It, it, it's so hard to choose between the two. I don't know if anyone can guess which way I'm leaning at this point in time because no, I can't. what it came down to, really, it, it was this execution of one moment, and that's this moment. And I've mentioned this before when we did the, the grunge special, Dave, where when Facelift comes on and then you've got – um sea of sorrow and then there's the the chorus which goes you open fire and the drum has the extra hit with the extra reverb yep. um, which goes which sounds like a gunshot going off in the in the mix it's such a subtle thing but that level of execution that depth of detail was what was enough to sort of push one album ahead or behind stop. the other one stop right now okay because i've known you for over 10 years we have done Black Sabbath. We've done Grunge. We've done Alice in Chains. We've done Black Sabbath. I know you love Alice in Chains. I know you love this the human other. I have no fucking idea which way you're going. <laughs> I honestly yeah, don't. Continue. Yeah. This time around, I'm going to rip the bandit off. There's fuck all in this for me, but I'm going Alice in Chains. Um, yeah. I have to. And it's just that, that, that I know that it takes you to a darker, more menacing place, but yeah. I tend to live there pretty comfortably a lot of the time anyway. And so, for, for lack of a better term here, but the funny thing is, at the end of the album, it's all sexual chocolate, baby. So I'm going Alice yeah, in Chains. <laughs> Even though it doesn't win for us, for me, it was the winner for this week. So I have to give one vote. It's not a clean sweep, but I don't think yeah. it deserved to be swept. To be yeah. Sorry, after yeah. That, like, it didn't. It's um, too good. But yeah. it, it was, good it's point. a monster record. Like I said, I think it gets overlooked because of how good Dirt is. But I think people go back in time and will discover this album more and more as the years go on because it's such a – for a, it's a debut. For fuck's sake, it's a debut album. Yeah. It has yeah. got to be in the conversation there's a reason, for debuts. There's a reason Dave Mustaine picked up on them and took mm. him out with him on the Clash of the Titans yeah. to open the Clash yeah. of the Titans. Exactly. Man, was, man they played was, to a hard crowd when they did that. And then yeah, he, he, was heavily he, he was heavily responsible for breaking them. He was really pushing yeah. them. Yeah. 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 And, and man, they cop they copped it every fucking night though. That yeah. crowd hated them. I think Van Halen yeah. too. Van Halen picked them up as well. Ben Halen did as well. Yeah. And, and the audience didn't. But then that was the cool thing, because like in the guitar magazines from the early days, like bands like Skid Row and Ace Freely, they were hanging out with Jerry Cantrell. Yeah. yeah. As yeah. much as there was a division between what came before and the grunge that yeah. came after, Alice well, in Chains think, was that band that, that, that kind of bridged the note, gap between Alice everyone. Chains probably a bit more acceptable, accessible with yeah. the metal the metal community, yeah, maybe. They the were, metal, yeah, but once I think again, Chains, everything they did was on purpose. It wasn't yeah. a happy accident. No, but Alice right. in Chains also mm. that unique ability, even now to be a more chameleon band, they can blend and blur the lines. Yeah. They're the hardest to categorize, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and I, I think they're yeah. they're a special band for that. But 
we have an audience result to go into this one as well. I'll get to comments in a second, folks, for those that are sticking around here. Um, it's interesting here because we've gone against the audience uh, for the first yeah. time in, in this whole series. Yeah. So the audience by a vote of almost two to one went wow. with wow. Alice in Chains. Almost two to <laughs> one, Alice in Chains. We've gone the other way. So this makes things interesting because the audience the vote audience hates us. <laughs> Between 1992, the audience. audience the audience is actually split. It's three votes each way in those years. For us, it's now four to two. So it's going to be interesting to see which one this plays out and how we're going to do things after next week. Because yeah. we'll, what the we'll fuck start. happens now? <laughs> I know. We'll probably keep going to, to just sort of see how it plays out. But yeah. Yeah. we're one round away from crowning a winner on our side of things. The audience are at least two away. So we'll see how things shake out. Next week is ACDC, The Razor's Edge versus Megadeth Countdown to Extinction. So mm -hmm. probably doesn't get any easier, or it does, depending on your point of view. Um, yeah. <laughs> but we shall see. But that is – so the audience went with Alice in Chains. Uh, we didn't. So we have finally our first divergence. It's taken six <laughs> rounds to get our first divergence, which is pretty cool, actually, when you think about it all. Um, yeah. But now I'm going to go to some audience comments here just to see what's going on. So Rowan says – uh, two new albums for me. I, I gave Alice in Chains album a good try, but didn't want to finish it. I had more luck with the Sabbath album. It's very simple, but there are some good tracks on it. Easy win for me. So there we go. This one for Sabbath. Uh, Rowan says Vincent reached Conrad. <laughs> That's when he dropped out. <laughs> well done. Well played. Um, Guru says, hate to admit it, but I'm facelift on this one. There we go. So we did, this one is tough. Vinny says, Man in the Box would make a great entrance song the next time Jesus makes his appearance after three-day bender. Um, <laughs> side, TV Crimes is a killer track. Uh, Vinny says, I love the uh, personal take on it, Dave. Some of it mirrored in my life back then when Dio came into my life. So there we go. Um, <laughs> Rowan's gone, facelift is more uplifting. Quote, Bell. Um, <laughs> Michael says, Andrew Pete Alice in Chains, duh. Well, there we go. And uh, Michael, though, says, to humanize a no contest for Michael on his mm -hmm. vote there. Look, these are fun. We're, we're, we'll yeah. see how things go over the next few weeks. But next week, like I was saying, is Razor's Edge from ACDC versus Countdown to Extinction from Megadeth. Oh, um, Whoa. Time for some more fun and games next week. But for now, oh, yeah. it's nearly time to wrap things up. But before we get out of here, uh, make sure you like, follow, subscribe, all the usual stuff that everyone gets you to do. Check us out on telly. 10.30 p.m. Saturday nights on Channel 31 in Melbourne. 10.30 p.m. Thursday nights on Channel 44 in Adelaide. You can catch both those broadcasts on ctvplus.org.au or CTV Plus app on your device. Um, please, 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 if you'd be so kind, like I say, like, follow, subscribe to us. But I did actually finally get around to updating the Patreon um, pages and, and tabs and everything last night. And I'd love it if you'd all go and give it a look because with us doing interviews again where I'm trying to get one to two interviews done a week to edit, yeah. to record, to do these things, that's a lot of hours. On I'll, I'll do it anyway, but the trouble is by having to – I'm flexible with my day job. I can do things. I can push and pull a bit, but at the same time, the more we get on Patreon side of things, the more I'm able to get done behind the scenes. There's, there's over a decade of archive stuff I want to get out. There's a shitload I want to get done. Just any help you can give us on the Patreon side is greatly, greatly appreciated and will allow literally the hours I need to do things. It's going to us, going to me to basically sit here at the computer and, and do the shit that needs to be done yep. for editing, yep. responding to comments, emails, all that kind of stuff. It's, it's a whole thing that you have no idea how many hours. There is so with. much oh. cool stuff out there. If you think what we do every Thursday night is funny, Check out the shit that's in the archive. You yeah, want this? It, it's shit ridiculous. Out. <laughs> yeah. So please, if you if you be so kind, it, it the cheapest tier. I couldn't do any cheaper. The cheapest one I can actually manufacture is uh, the two dollar a month. But if you can spare two dollars a month, if I get like ten percent or less of our audience to convert to two dollars a month, I'm done. Like I don't need mm. more than that to, to to make this work. So I'm not looking for a, a bazillion dollars. I'm just looking to make enough yeah. to pay the bills and, and keep things afloat. Um, it's less than a price of coffee at two dollars. Yeah, come yeah. on, so, tell your friend, if, get that straight jacket can... and open up. It says the hard rock show. Look <laughs> at my hard rock show. Yeah, so anyhow, I'm, I'm going to be doing I know it's going to be people maybe not want to see it, but I'm going to do a, a, an extended campaign on this one. We'll be posting about it not all the time, but you know, at, at repeated intervals to sort of keep plugging yeah. and pushing because it's one of those things we've had to keep just sort of pushing it along to get to the goal. So if you're there, thank you so much for your support. You guys all know that I try and give you as much as I can. Um, but yeah, it's one of those things where this is a point where to make things really move forward, I really need to sort of go one way or the other. I want to go that way, so any help you can give us there is, is appreciated. Um, but beyond that, 
that's the usual stuff. Um, give us your thoughts as always on anything we do and check out the extra stuff we do. I'll re be releasing re reviews, stuff we haven't... I pa Patreon, I've seen a lot of stuff we haven't released yet, even this year. There's a whole lot that just needs to be fucking dealt with. Um, but anyway, that'll do us. Let's go to the bin and get out of here. So, Dave, what are you putting in the bin this week? Oh, fuck. You know, I, I didn't even have a bin, but, like, an hour before we went live, it finally came through. If you remember, like, a few weeks ago, I was bitching about Woolworths. My four dollars twenty has actually turned up within the twelve yeah. weeks. Wow! The fuck yeah! <laughs> wow! The, Woolworths, the bin again. I'm, <laughs> I'm glad to have my four dollars twenty. I'm not sure what I'm going to invest that shit. In. <laughs> you guys, <laughs> you motherfuckers, in the bin. You might be able to buy an avocado over there. <laughs> Maybe I'm going to spend it in calls. Maybe Fuck you never go. I'm going to get a call. Dave. Yep. Spend it spend in calls. Yeah, so we'll want a big W in the fucking bin. Yeah, fair enough. All right. <laughs> Jeff, over to you. Yeah, look. Um, so I, I was fucking like, I had lunch today early. And, and, um, and then I was like, you know, trying to, save on calories and stuff and stuff but i was by the time i was writing here just a few things before the show and i was about uh because we go live around you know a little bit after nine and i'm like mm. so it was about 10 to 8 i thought fuck this i i i i, I gotta order something because i just didn't want to cook i wanted to yeah. have something while i was eating while i was writing so i ordered on uber eats okay sorry and uh i kept seeing um just wrapping up for like an hour and oh. i'm messaging them i'm like just wrapping up but i see the guy's little car what are you wrapping up the fucking building what the fuck are you wrapping up <laughs> <laughs> like seriously and um so i messaged the guy i'm like dude like is there is there a problem with the order I, i've literally been watching this thing wrapping up for and he doesn't i can see that it says he saw the message he didn't reply okay fuck no. i go in the app cancel order Oh no no no! Just wait. It's it's. Don't worry about it, Jeff. It's on its way. Just relax. It says it's on its way. <laughs> just relax. Yeah, just that's literally what it says. Just relax. It's on its way. And I'm like, no, no, no. So oh, I've never done that like, shit. Yeah, it was like thirty eight dollars. Like that was including wow. delivery fee and all that stuff, right? Yeah. And uh, eventually, I I just like, like I I said I sent a message to Uber Eats. I said, look, I want this order canceled. This comes up a little butt. I said. I don't have time to fucking eat it. So thank you very much. I don't have time to eat it now because I, you know, I'm, I'm going to be busy. Yeah. Okay. We'll cancel it for you, uh, but it's going to cost you twenty eight dollars. So you'll oh, get wow. ten back. What? Because the, the ten bucks, I guess, is like the delivery and all that sort of shit. I don't wow. know. I've got Uber Eats Premium or Gold. Yeah, or whatever yeah. It is, you know, so I don't because you know I do it a lot and it saves me a bit of money. But yeah, so I didn't get my food. And it cost me twenty eight dollars for the fucking trouble. So that is in the fucking bin. Fuck that, yeah. Nonstop, fucking do not touch, go, and whatever. Yeah. In the fucking bin. Constantly. That's bad. That's I'm still bad. hungry. I'm still That's hungry. Shit. Yeah. Well, hopefully yeah. you'll get something sooner after this. I'm, Let's get oh, yeah, I'll, I'll Let's get see what it. happens. All right. Let's do this. Bell, what are you putting in the bin this week? Um, uh, I'm like you guys. I didn't have anything until. I don't know, like an hour or so before. <laughs> and I'm thinking, what has pissed me off this week? And I am putting boobs in the bin. <laughs> what? What? Wrong audience, <laughs> Phil. What are you doing? No. no. There's, there's, I'm we, sure there's. We love there. boobs on this show. No. <laughs> we love boobs. What the fuck? You no, can't put boobs in the bin. Man boobs or just boobs? Well, my boobs, I'm putting in the bin. I can't speak for like other women because. You need a bigger bin, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> wow. oh, Jeff, you're so anyway, bad. Belle. All right, I'm putting, look, I'll put them in the bin because they're fucking annoying. Like, I've noticed that I got these two. This is probably way too much information, but I'm. <laughs> It probably already was, yeah, but yeah, there's like yeah. indents from like my straps because I've been yeah. fucking holding these things up for fucking decades, <laughs> right? Yeah, and I don't like that. I'm like, this is this is like marring me. 
Like, that's just not right. And mm. I think they're fucking useless. Okay, if you're feeding a child, fine. But otherwise, what is the point? Why do they still have to be there? There's For no us. point to them. <laughs> For us yeah, men fun, to enjoy. Fun Seriously, fun no, yeah. they are not fun. They are not they fun. They are fun. A lot of fun. One no, of the, one of the fun design. one of the fun slang names is fun bags, and you're taking the fun, fun bags. <laughs> well, I'm a fun wrecker. I'm sorry. <laughs> there's nothing I can do. They they're just they're pointless unless they're not pointless. You're using them. <laughs> if why? they're pointless, why are doing they it wrong, there? But okay. No, why are they to keep there? us they men entertained? Yeah. Well. <laughs> Fucking great. Oh, <laughs> You're pretty good great. at like entertaining yourself. I know. With your own I, I know. <laughs> sorry. Oh, yeah. So I'm <laughs> sorry. I couldn't think of anything else. So no, that's a good wow. one. First, we haven't had that before. That's a that's good a new else. one. Okay. That's a In new the one. bin. Well done. Hey, the, the bell is sorry. The bell. The bin is as personal as you want it to be, Bell. So there you go. Um. <laughs> all right, Conrad, you get to follow that up. Well, I don't want to bring it on a downer because of that shit that happened in Sydney. But yes, people oh, talk about your boobs, man. Dabbing people and shit. No, that's awful. It's terrible what's happened over there. If, you, if you're going to bin your sack, bin. I'll be really impressed. However, uh, what I do want to put in the bin is rock stars. This has come to light over something that happened recently. And it's rock stars that have lost touch with their audience and lost touch. Mm with with uh, connecting with their audience and have become too distant distance themselves too far away from their audience yeah. and aren't willing Got to <laughs> aren't willing to connect with their audiences and and bruce dickinson doing a show at the whiskey a go-go announcing a show i think on the day or a day before at the whiskey a go-go and he said you've got to go down to the venue and buy tickets at the door and he, and he was selling booth. tickets yeah, he was in, in the booth, booth selling well, tickets at the that? door that's so cool. and that's so cool that's yeah, so that's cool. cool and that's so rock and roll wow. and so i want to highlight the fact that there aren't enough bands out there doing that type of yeah. thing and yeah. connecting with their audience it's cool yeah so it's people that aren't doing that kind of shit are going in the bands that aren't doing that kind of stuff that that you know connecting yeah. with the fans kind of shit can go in the bin you know bands who think they're too cool or too yeah. above up in the ivory the town go in the bin. Yeah. yeah 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 i like bruce you know reconnecting with the fans like that that's awesome i mean you turn up yeah. to the the venue to buy a ticket yeah. and bruce fucking serves you at the at the, yeah, at the ticket so cool. office i mean that's I awesome that. that's that's so that. cool that's so rock and roll, exactly. Best things I've seen in years, to be honest. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I was just filled with joy, Bruce filled with joy when I heard that. Back. It just, yeah. it just put a smile on my face. I was just like, "This is amazing. That's so cool." And yeah. so I wish that there were more bands doing that kind of thing. So for bands that aren't doing, bands that aren't doing that, they did yeah. the Lars Ulrichs, the Axel Roses out there, the the people that are, you know, think that they're above that. Hey, Go hey, fun. hey! What, what, what in the last? couple of days one everyone's been talking because it's like 10 years since Lars sues Nas Nasper and everyone yeah. is of the opinion that one Lars was right and two he was there's, a, he there's was. a brand Lars is right secondly Axel there is a brand spanking new Axel Rose website it just there was talk yeah yeah there's talk that's going to be for a biography book which in itself is fascinating but two why a website just for a biography solo album there was no. no guns and roses shows planned for 2023 right. the first time since 2016. <laughs> slash well, we'll is see. on tour slash is on tour of miles kennedy duff I is know. on tour of his solo last band. Week. yeah there was a lot last of week. things that could happen so yeah let's yeah, see but, sorry just getting back to what i was saying just rock stars that have lost yeah. contact with reality and yeah. their fans and aren't making the effort that they could and should yeah. you know um so yeah and and i think bruce really hammered that he's, it made yeah, me really you know he's putting a spotlight on it isn't he yeah absolutely i mean i remember when megadeth in argentina they all the fans were at the out the front of the hotel they're all they're all out in the you know they obviously yeah. hanging around the hotel wanting to meet the band and there was a whole mob of them out the front of the hotel so the band grabbed some acoustics went down into the lobby went across the road to a park across the road 
and sat down and, and did an acoustic set for the fans in a park the across the road. They did that the other day, like three song acoustic set just the other day in front of a hotel. Yeah. Just the other day yeah. they did that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and you know that's so cool. I think that that that's we need more bands doing at a, at yeah. that level. The big bands that yeah. are at that level, the arena fillers doing that kind of shit. Yeah, yeah, keeping it real. Yep. Yeah. Indeed. So Indeed. the bands that aren't keeping it real and connecting with their fans, go fuck yourselves. You can go in the bin. <laughs> Good point. No, I, I yeah. get it, and, and, and I'm I'm just going to yeah. say that on this note, it's, it's not my like bin, but there is a lot of complaining going on about you know how live touring isn't worth it anymore and and you know streaming they, it's funny how they're always so quick to put spotify in the bin but youtube pays less than spotify so it's like you know pin, bin them all or don't just don't cherry pick you know i mean don't don't jump yeah. like they're all they're all shit i'm not saying right. any streaming rate is good they're all shit they're all shit <laughs> it's just yeah. pointless blaming one entity they're all bad um i think there needs to be a new medium has to come along and and change things for bands we'll see yeah. i don't know but yeah. but i just wanted Changing to point out like what you were saying there conrad i, I loved seeing bruce getting the ticket booth and i think that it's going to be with everyone talking about this stuff and how where things are with touring and yeah. streaming and all that stuff yeah. that that level of connection with your fan base is where it's yeah. all going to be yeah. in the next 10 years yeah. So yeah. if you're not wor willing to go there, you're going to be left behind. Um, yeah. My actual bin for this week to try and obviously we've had a dark week in in Australia, but yeah. for my Sorry. no, that's all right. But for my and I, and I get it, but I'm not going to go to that one. I'm going to go with something else, no. which is dark but funny at the same time, which is kind of you know weighing into my Alice in Chains binge. Um, Bill, you might be able to relate to this. I'm not sure, but push bike riders on country fucking roads. No, oh. get in the fucking <laughs> bin. I, I know it's I, I lived in Melbourne. I can relate really. to that in suburbia. Just fucking yeah. push uh, bikes. I, I, fuck but off. thing is, right in 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 suburbia in the cities, you've got you know bike lanes and and room for the yeah. bikes to go. I like my main road after I get off the road I live on is a ninety kilometer hour zone. Right, there's mm. one lane each way and it's barely a fucking lane. And because it was just school holidays, you get all these fucking blowing tourists that want to get on their fucking race of speed bikes with their lycra on and go driving around these, oh, go driving, <laughs> but riding on these fucking roads with fucking potholes everywhere in a 90 kilometer hour zone, oh. blind turns all over the joint. One of you yeah. fuckers is going to get, get taken out pretty fucking soon. All right. If you don't know the area, don't ride your push bike. I hate to say it because push bikes are fun. I used to do it all the time, but seriously don't do it because one of you is going to die and then who's going to pay the price not the fucking bike rider that shouldn't be there to begin with but every yeah. fucker that drives that road every fucking day will lose so much out of it it's yeah. not the right place to ride those bikes it's really not it's a fucking one-way thing there's potholes seriously if you come up if you see the bike in time it's going to be a, a miracle if you can see them and then navigate around and hope there's not a fucking truck yeah. coming the other way it's a fucking disaster waiting to happen. Don't do it. Really. It's fucking stupid. And the amount of times I see it after holidays, you know, with everyone going, oh, I want to go camping, I'm going to take my fucking ritzy ditch fucking racer bike. Fuck off. Just fuck off. Go to the fucking Peladrome, wherever it is fucking near you, and go ride laps. Like, mm -hmm. you don't need to fucking do it in a 90-kilometer-hour zone. It's fucking stupid. You're not going to win. You're going to lose that argument pretty fucking quick. Um so that's my bin. I saw a lot of them over the last couple of weeks, and it's like just fuck off because <laughs> you're gonna fuck it up for everyone. Because and the, the worst part is you don't fucking pay to ride. It's and and that's cool, but just go where it's safe. Yeah. Just don't do it where it's not safe because it's like it's a bad idea. Yeah. My brother-in-law used to drive trucks. He gave up on driving trucks because he nearly cleaned up bike riders, and he and he was like, wow. it's a matter of time. Like he he just said it's a matter of time. Yeah. He's off. He couldn't right. do it anymore. Yeah. So wow. it's it, wow. that's how bad it is out here. Just don't do it. Yeah. Like there's all those for... cyclists, all those cyclists watching. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. seriously, it's it's not a good idea. Like I, I know I empathize. I used to ride pushies all the fucking time, but not in this area of the world. Like where it's it's actually a bad idea. Where it's urbanized, okay, fine, go for your life, but not not where it's wild shit all over the joint and you got fucking B doubles and cars doing 90 Ks where you can't see shit and you're and on top of that they don't just ride single file do they no they gotta ride fucking two no. or three across idiots yeah like which mm. I think is I don't know if it's illegal but they're not supposed to do that. Yeah. Because the the car can't kind of safely 
go around yeah. when they're yeah. taking And if the you're whole doing way. 90Ks and then there's at the top of this fucking yeah. hill, there's a fucking turn and a bike is there. It's like, where the fuck do you go? Yeah, that's right. Where do you go? Yeah. But it happens yeah. in suburbia as well. It's fucked I'll tell you up. What, it's worse me, because me, there's more traffic in here. Yeah, but if it's a choice of me taking out a push bike rider or going headlong into another car doing 90Ks toward me. You're going to take the fucking bike rider out. <laughs> bike rider loses. Sorry, I'm not going head on yeah, to another car. Sorry. Yeah. Not going to happen. Unless there no, is to my right. car. I agree. Yeah, absolutely. So, well, it's getting dark and it's getting, you know, <laughs> we don't want to do this. But uh, now this kind of goes back to last week. Now, do you remember, yeah. Andrew? Uh, oh. I, I, as I said, I, I'm a very giving All guy. Right, well, I said Andrew, uh, a present because I'm a very giving guy. Hi, right, Conrad. You did. did. You okay. Well, yeah, Conrad's a good boy. So we, we right. wish Conrad well yes, for the rest well, of the week. This, this is maybe not for, not safe for children. That's why he's left. Maybe. I have, <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have a prop. All right. So I said Andrew a book. Should I go solo? Oh, wait. Yeah, go on. All right. No, that's it. Uh, this is. This, this <laughs> you sent me a book. This was a and gift that is. I gave to Andrew. Yes. All right. Well, here we go. This is what I went hunting for last week for those watching the stream last week, and I couldn't find it. So this, da, 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 da. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> that's that's I I was in a giving mood and I thought Andrew. You know, was look at, look like, at I, I, I know I, I I know I leave to like the like after we go off stream, you guys stick around to talk. What the fuck are you guys yeah. talking about? You know, this gets better because you'll notice that it says you know how to live with. You know how many tips there are on this thing? <laughs> not a one. <laughs> All right. It's 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 um, a hang on, hang on, hang on. something out. Okay, okay. This, out. this this no 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 no. This is this is when we need Jody to join the stream. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and she will say that there's this thing called growing, not showing. There you go. Mm. Um yeah. so yeah, no, what it was was a joke prop that I was going to send to a it's friend, a and I'll explain what happened. And yeah. uh, I, I, in my address book, I didn't realize I had accidentally sent it to Andrew, and I realized accidentally. Yeah, it was I, actually I got the text to go going, "Oh, hang on, don't be offended." Yeah, it was supposed <laughs> to go to another buddy, and then I'm like, "Well, hey, you can enjoy." Okay, it. okay. You can like enjoy the questions too. go back to Jeff. Why are you looking at this shit, dude? It's a prop. It's a, it's a joke. So what it was was for Christmas. Well, I, I know Canadians are different, dude. But <laughs> let me let me just show you. Uh, uh, I'll show you something. I'll see if I can. Uh, I'm not your buddy, guys. In this conversation, I'm worried. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I don't know if I want to. What see are you show? Sure? No. We're I, no. Conrad's crutch. <laughs> we've, we've had an evening. We've had Conrad's crutch. Bell tits in the bin. Had a little bit of small dicks. Um. So okay. <laughs> Here's the thing. I was going to send this to. Um, I think I can. You, you'll have to. This is. Um, oh, hang on. Conrad's back. Here we go. Conrad's back. Conrad's Sorry. Back. Sorry. I'm. I'm. Apologies that my crutch took up the entire screen. <laughs> <laughs> unlike. Uh, uh, unlike. Unlike Andrew's book, I don't have this problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> there we go. Did you see the book yet? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So what happens last Christmas, right? I was looking on uh, on for like for on on Amazon for like sending stuff out to people and stuff like that, yeah. stocking stuffers and stuff. And I came across some really cool things. And this one I was gonna get for the ex-wife. And then um, as it happened, it sold out. And I didn't get it. But then I saw some of the you know. But see, I'll, I'll see if we can get this. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> Anti so anti cunt <laughs> pa pair of cuntamol, specially formulated to yeah. Oh, wow. that. It's um specially <laughs> to stop you from being a complete cut. That's what it says. <laughs> so, so I I thought oh, I put that in her in her uh, uh oh, stop wow. uh, yeah. I, was still alive. Maybe I, would, I might not have lived it, it actually comes you when you get it, it comes with a prescription bag and everything. Oh, oh really? Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, it goes all in. Yeah. Oh yeah. So I got fucked. I got to get that. But then I went to get it and it was gone. So, uh, but then I saw other ones, 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 and I thought, oh fuck, I got to get this. So yeah, I ended up, and that's what happened. I ended up <laughs> sending right. it to you. 
That's but we've um we've done a lot of genitalia tonight. Uh, let's go to the audience, audience comments and get out of here. Um, it's coming up fast. Vinny, Vinny says, my bin just the other day, I offered the, the dwarf my assistance with a large TV. He was struggling to carry out a good guy's. He's screaming it's to so fuck good. off. It's an iPad. There we go. There's Vinny. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. Just, just, uh, just, uh, here we go. Just keep going here. Vinny says, I'm taking booze right out of the bin. I'm all for the recycling, Bell. So there we go. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, but Nicole, here you go. I'm with you, Bell. Boobs in the bins. So there we go. There's Thank one you. That one. I knew the girls. Underwire it. sucks. I hear you, Bell. So more love on that one. Vinny says, they don't look pointless from here, Bell. Just laugh. <laughs> um, <laughs> But on to Bruce Dickinson, moving along. Uh, Nicole says, got to love Bruce. There we go. Yeah. Uh, Vinny says, I'd like to see Vince Neil serving burgers at a drive-thru. Imagine having to stock take each shift thereafter. Um, <laughs> Vinny follows that with lycra pants in the bin also. Your plums look hideous. Boobs, on the other hand, dot, dot, dot. Um, <laughs> Nicole says, if there is no bike lane, stay off the road. It's simple mass for fuck's sake. I agree, Nicole. Uh, trigger warning. There we go. And Michael mm -hmm. says, single track mountain bike. Better none of you road raging maniacs on trail. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Guru says, peace, guys. I see Vince Neil said burgers too. Joel is laughing, so we're all having fun. But I think that's a good place to wrap things up. Um, thank you all so much for your time and your company tonight. Uh, apologies for being a bit late. We had a lot of technical issues behind the scenes here tonight before yeah. we got started. So we've had some fun. We've had a good time. Uh, we look forward to seeing you all same time place next week. Thank you to Dave, to Conrad, to, uh, to Conrad, uh, to Conrad, to Bill, and to Jeff. Fuck me, dude. It's late. Um, thank you, yeah, everyone, for jumping in here tonight, uh, for joining me on this live stream. Make sure to check us out, like I was saying, same time, place, every week, and on telly and that and everything else we do as well. But, yeah, more to come very, very soon. But if nothing else, we'll see you for our next live stream Thursday next week. Until then, I'm Andrew. As always, folks, you know exactly what to do. Until next time, we'll see you soon. Until then, drink up. Rock drink up. up. Rock on. Uh, Ta-da. Uh... Ah.